far to three years with no limitations on where the U.S. military could chase the apparent terror threat. The language of the bill does not make it clear if ground troops are a possibility. However, it bans enduring offensive combat operations. Controversy continues in the September 11th trial as a former CIA linguist working as a translator for one of the alleged 9-11 planners was revealed to have worked at a secret CIA prison. Defense lawyers for the accused have asked the judge to hold off on a planned pretrial hearing and to perform an investigation and background checks on staff. Defense attorney Cheryl Borman said the incident decimated any trust on the defense team. Judge Army Colonel James Pohl will question the prosecution about why the former CIA linguist was working for the defense team. The accused said they recognized the man from their years in secret prisons. The trial has been plagued with accusations of spying on the defense team and infiltration by the government. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by CoinArch, offering innovative trading solutions for Bitcoin. Do more than just buy and sell Bitcoin. Use long and short positions to profit in rising and falling markets and boost your returns through leverage. Learn more at CoinArch.com. Support also comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, February 12th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A New York City police officer has been charged with second-degree manslaughter for killing an unarmed man last November. Officer Peter Lang's gun discharged a single bullet which struck and killed 28-year-old Akash Gurley. Lang was charged with manslaughter, criminal negligent homicide, second-degree assault, second-degree reckless endangerment, and two counts of official misconduct. A California woman battling leukemia is suing the state attorney general for the right to have a physician-assisted suicide. The lawsuit is asking the San Francisco Superior Court to decide whether California law protects doctors from prosecution for assisting a dying, mentally competent patient. Christine White said she's suing the state to remove the legal barriers between her doctor and her ability to achieve a peaceful and dignified death. Researchers at a Texas museum have discovered the remains of a Demetrodon. The skeleton is believed to be around 290 million years old. The skeleton was discovered in Seymour, Texas, located about 135 miles northwest of Fort Worth. The discovery was made by Chris Fliss and his team at the Whiteside Museum of Natural History. Dimetrodons are not dinosaurs, but rather paleosaurs, which are more closely related to mammals than reptiles. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Support also comes from the Free State Project. Want to find liberty in your lifetime? Then join thousands of others who are making the move to New Hampshire, the freest state in the Union. To learn more or to pledge to move today, visit freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, February 12th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A hot new murder craze sweeps Chicago. Things that shouldn't be said in modern society are said 1,400 times at the RNC, and a brave woman enters a restaurant without first looking it up online. This is the Onion Week in Review. The World Wildlife Fund quickly backtracked Thursday from a recently released press statement saying panda ears are, quote, absolutely delicious. Organization officials noted that while panda ears do taste amazing, braised, steamed, fried, or cooked in an omelet, they should not have announced it publicly, nor should they have ever eaten any part of a cheetah, giraffe, or bang tiger, no matter how good they may be. According to company sources, the Netflix board of directors held a tense series of meetings earlier this morning to decide whether the fantasy comedy Michael is streamworthy. The board reportedly sat through its mandatory two back-to-back -back screenings of the 1996 film starring John Travolta as an angel visiting Earth, all while passionately arguing over the film's story, acting, and level of enjoyment upon subsequent viewings to determine if the movie should be available through its instant viewing program. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here and bring up what you want, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. 
Uh, we also have Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to reach out to us that way. Just send a contact request first. It will be approved uh, once we notice it. And then after that, it'll be easy for you to call us on Skype from that point forward. Last night, I did promise the latest John Cantley ISIS video, and we didn't get a chance to scratch the surface of it. Uh, and so I do want to get to that because, well, we've kind of made a tradition of playing the ISIS propaganda videos here on Free Talk Live. Not because I take anyone's side in this particular conflict between the group calling themselves ISIS, whoever they are, and the United States government. I certainly don't take a side in that. And uh, it's Ian here with you tonight, by the way. And Johnson. Let's go to your phone calls first, uh, where we have Forrest on the line in Louisiana. Forrest, you're on Free Talk Live with uh, Ian and Johnson. Go ahead. Hey, it's great to great to finally talk to you guys. Uh, I've listened to hundreds and hundreds of hours of your shows, but it's rarely convenient to be able to call in and uh, talk live. Um, I saw that somebody posted a link about Citizen Four to the show prep on Reddit, and I just wanted to say that um, I, you know, I didn't really, uh, I, I didn't know if it was going to be worth driving a long distance to go see this movie. Um, so I didn't get to think I'd get to see it in the theaters, but it was incredibly uh, intense. I I, uh, I got to see it about I guess about six weeks ago. What is Citizen Four? It's the Edward Snowden documentary. Yes, and um, I was pretty shocked. I didn't realize that there was a documentary filmmaker in the room with him when he first started giving the information to Greenwald really? and the and the filmmaker. And um, it was one of the most intense documentaries I've ever seen. Um, Hold on a second. So he actually, he realized in advance that what he was doing was so important that he needed to have someone there to document it? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. And it was crazy to watch it unfold because these guys, you know, they didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't, you know, they're they're worried about people coming down on them at any second, maybe assassinating them. It's, and, and, and wow. He, and he was, of course, he was right, you know, we knew about the harassment that happened with Greenwald's partner and, and how they are under surveillance uh, the the filmmaker, the journalists, and uh, there's definitely um, there's definitely some some lashback from the the people. That sounds really amazing. I mean, I have to say that, uh, that that's a surprise to me. And it it you know obviously with documentaries, a lot of times they have reenactments that right. try to that are bad. Yeah, <laughs> but this was real. This was the uh, in the moment. This was actually what was happening. That sounds really really interesting. Yeah, it was it was incredible, and still, apparently, the way they're doing it. I mean, I, I watched it in a theater with about sixteen people. It was a very small, independent theater that, and I'm I'm really lucky that I just happened to see an announcement for it on uh, local activities uh, email, mm. and because I, I, I didn't think I'd ever have a chance to do this, but um, but yeah, everybody was just it was really it was really an experience. I I recommend everybody um, go look at the Fandango and see because it's still touring. It's still being shown in select theaters right. just like a handful at a time. And uh, if you just like documentaries, even, I mean, I don't think that there was anything in the film I didn't really know, um, you know, as far as what he was revealing, which is really shocking, but it's still, still to see that live, to see that happen on film and to see him telling the journalists about it for the first time, it really sinks in, you know, what a 1984 type of crazy world we're living in now and, um, you know, you don't feel like there's really any kind of paranoid thoughts that you could have because nothing's unreasonable. You know, I guess for our listeners who maybe have been in, living in a cave uh, and don't know who Edward Snowden is, he is the guy who, gosh, was it mid-2013 at this point? Uh, the summer of 2013, I think it was, uh, where he came out with uh, these NSA leaks, essentially. And uh, they're still coming out, all kinds of leaks, not just about the NSA, but uh, the G GCHQ, which is the NSA's sister agency, if you will, over in Great Britain. And this guy you know, rocked the world uh, news headlines and, and has been continuing to do so. He escaped from Hawaii, where he was living, uh, living at the time, ultimately to Russia, where he still uh, has been granted asylum, from what I understand, and is still there. So it's just been a fascinating thing to to watch. What sort of time span does the Citizen Four movie take place over? When does it go from and to? Uh, it starts on basically um, the, the majority of the film covers just I think about three or four days. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe maybe it's maybe it's a little bit longer than that, but it's 
it's really when he first hands over the stuff, they, they go to press with it and then they wait for the reaction. You know, they watch it on TV and then they decide, you know, then he applies for asylum and uh, protection, the human rights lawyers. And, um, uh, but there's, it, you know, before it starts, the it details how he got in touch with the, the filmmaker. Mm-hmm. And um, I think he got in touch with Greenwald as well directly and, and all the things he had to go through um, to make sure that he pulled this off, that he got out of the country and was able wow. to meet with them securely and, and not, you know, nobody was kidnapped or murdered in the process. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's something else. It's crazier than any spy movie I've ever seen. Far out. I feel like you guys should reveal some of the, some of the things, I mean, you've been talking about, like there's no paranoid thought that you could possibly have. And, and uh, you know, these earth shattering things that he's revealed and, and haven't really mentioned any of them. I mean, you, you oh, sorry. spoke briefly to, you know, people who are living under a rock. I, I'm I not guess, one of them, but I do feel like maybe there are, maybe there could be somebody listening who has no idea what sort of revelations that Snowden came up with, and, and a, a sampling would be good. Sure, uh, I think probably the things that are the most shocking is just that he exposed that the NSA was listening to everybody all the time, and there was no, there was no kind of, you know, we think you've committed a crime, so we're going to go get a warrant. Um, they they were getting, and they were they were doing it with cooperation of these, uh, of the telecommunications companies and a lot of these places just, just hand over the access to their systems, uh, based on the NSA's word that they're not going to abuse their power, which they were, they were abusing their power. And he shows, he shows that. And he was also talking about stuff like you could see, you could just look at the feeds, live feeds from thousands of drones and you don't know what they're looking at, but there's this video footage of somebody's house, and it's just hovering there. Don't forget uh, the program where they could tap into anybody's, uh, if they had an IP address or even an email address, they could use that to somehow bring up basically ac- full access to their computer, which was just absolutely crazy. Yeah, it's tough that, you know, you'd think that if you heard somebody trying to just tell you that, you'd think they were out of their minds yeah. like surely they were you know the government's not monitoring everything we do that's that's crazy talk oh and i loved how yeah. when he the way they were releasing the details because there was so much being released uh, and there still is there are new things being released over time they've just been trickling them out that in the beginning the nsa was scrambling to try to you know uh to, to put the these allegations to rest and they'd come out and they'd say things like oh well you know that might have been the case but it's not the case now or they'd you know make other claims after edward snowden's allegations had been essentially proven and the way he released new allegations or information if you will the the way he released that was almost timed perfectly to essentially discount what the NSA said in response to the first stuff that he'd released. So he essentially led them to a place where they kept lying, and he kept calling their bluff. And it was just amazing just to watch them scrambling to try to retain some semblance of legitimacy, and they just couldn't do it because he just kept undermining them with this information. Yeah, that, that really was the genius. I think, actually, it was Greenwald that decided when and where, what to release. And um, Snowden... I. You know, I've heard CIA, uh, ex-CIA guys that, you know, go on talk radio like Mike Baker bash Snowden and call him a traitor and all this nonsense. Snowden really, um, he didn't pick anything to release. He says, look, I'm too close to this. I, I don't want responsibility for, you know, you're the journalists and I, I trust that you're going mm-hmm. to, to release things that aren't going to endanger CIA operatives. We don't want anybody, you know, getting killed because of what we're showing, but but um, he's like, you know, I, I don't know. So look, you decide what is the imp- important things and, and what's the safe information to release because there's so much. Forrest, uh, would you so recommend this movie to, uh, be shown to people who maybe don't know much about Edward Snowden or maybe have a negative opinion of him? Absolutely. Um, it really it was really inspiring to hear him talk about why he decided to basically destroy his entire life. And it was for us. <laughs> So, I mean, you know... If you, Guy's a hero, no doubt about it. Hey, thanks for the re- uh, the recommendation and the review. It's the most I've heard about the, the movie thus far. I knew it existed, but that's about all I knew. And now uh, it's definitely something I'm looking forward to seeing. Thank you for the call tonight, Forrest. There's more coming up. You can uh, bring up anything you'd like, just like Forrest did. 855, 450 free. The latest ISIS video is on the way. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. Yeah! Yeah!
This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no, no. wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free to bring up anything that you want. 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, joining you in studio, you've got me, Ian. And Johnson. Don't forget, you can join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Still to come, the audio from the latest ISIS propaganda video. But first, I want to propagandize you with berries. Berries.com. <laughs> Go to berries.com and right now, order for Valentine's Day because your time is very quickly running out. Uh, you go to berries.com and you can place your order with code FTL to get these special deals. 
Starting at just $19.99, it's over a 40% savings. You get giant, freshly dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries. They are dipped in delicious chocolate, white, milk, and dark chocolatey goodness, plus topped with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, or nuts. And they're delicious. They're awesome. The berries they use are the best of the best. You will not get a bad berry in this batch. And the chocolate, of course, that they are dipped in is absolutely scrumptious. You really can't beat this gift for whoever it is you care about this Valentine's Day. Don't be boring and get chocolates or some teddy bear or something like that. Go with Sherry's Berries. Go to berries.com. Click the microphone in the top right. Type in code FTL, like Free Talk Live. Code FTL to get the deals. And, oh, yeah, double the berries for just $10 more. This is something you want to do. You're not going to want to uh, get the single order. The double order is the way to go. And for just $10 more, you really uh, can't afford not to, uh, especially if you're going to be planning on sharing these things with somebody else. Berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. You will love them. Your loved one will adore you for it, I, I suspect. Think I, I think I recall, like, I was listening to Free Talk Live last Friday and I heard some sort of outlandish thing, like you said, you don't like dark chocolate. Was that you or is that No, Darryl? that was not me. That was Daryl that said that then. Yeah. But you both, you, both you and Daryl's favorite uh, of these Sherry's Berries is the white chocolate berry. No, I uh, I say it's a toss-up. I, I like the white chocolate, but I also really like the dark chocolate one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's hard for me to pick a favorite. I definitely think, uh, you know, I haven't had them yet. Oh. And... You know what but happened? I'm pretty sure that I would be a dark chocolate fan. Okay. So Mark ordered some, but he screwed up and he ordered the uh, the shipment go to our mailbox uh, yeah, rather than directly to the studio. And then he blew it by not picking them up for a day. So they have an ice pack in them, which helps with shipping and keeps them fresh. But obviously you can't let them sit in a 70 degree uh, there's <laughs> mailbox another, store. There's for- another possible way that he blew it, which was that we have a friend who works there who we could have had inform him when they yeah, came Yeah, he totally in. bombed. That would have been a way he but could have also- No, the thing is he'd <laughs> sent them to uh, the studio before. Every other time we had Sherry's Berries, he sent, right, had them send to the them studio. directly to the studio. We didn't have any problems. Which means if whatsoever. no one's here to actually pick them up, then they sit outside. Oh, it's too cold. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, what's going to happen? Even if you live in the south they they come with the ice pack and right. so it keeps them fresh at least until the ice pack warms up but so they do a great job of sending these things out and they get them to you fast it's overnight shipping b-e-r-r-i-e-s dot com use code ftl so let's go to john cantley uh, for those of you maybe who are unaware because these aren't headline stories you know if you watch the news at nighttime you're not going to hear anything about right. john cantley and the series of videos coming out of isis you're not going to see any clips from these videos, as far as the mainstream media is concerned, it's not to say they don't think they exist. It's just that whenever they report on it, all you get are some freeze frames and, you know, a generic uh, summary of what actually is stated in the video, which many of these videos have been as long as six, eight. This one's 12 minutes long. And so there's a lot of information in here. Now, of course, a, a critic will likely say that this is just p- pure propaganda and who knows what uh, what they're, if what they're saying is true. I, I'm not representing this as true. I just want to play it because you don't get that in other places. And in some cases, these things can be a little bit difficult to find because, as I pointed out, most of the mainstream media just kind of puts up some screenshots if they're reporting on this at all. So kudos to heavy.com for the, uh, being the, the organization to put it out there this time. And it seems like every time these videos come out, they're being hosted in a different place. So it's, it's, it's not like you can just subscribe to the ISIS channel on YouTube. I, I, really, <laughs> I would certainly hope not. Well, well, I wish you could. What would be wrong with that? I mean, why shouldn't ISIS be able to have its own propaganda channel? You don't think YouTube would deny it to the U.S. government? I mean, if the government wanted to create a channel on, uh, on I don't YouTube. Know, maybe because their content is killing people? Well, there is that. But the John Cantley videos don't include that uh, that stuff. So, I mean, I guess you could make the claim that, oh, well, actual violence doesn't belong on YouTube – of course, there's plenty of violence on YouTube, right. but like graphic, gory violence doesn't belong on YouTube. But these videos with John Cantley don't don't contain any of that. They're basically him walking around different cities or sitting at a news desk. I mean, that's it. So right. let me jump in here to the latest episode in what has been about 10, from what I understand, 10 videos hosted by John Cantley, who is ostensibly one of their hostages. And he has been uh, become their television host, of course, we're all hoping that uh, at least Mark and myself and uh, a few others, I'm sure, are hoping that he stays alive. Likely that's not how he's going to get out of right. this. 
Here we go. Hello, I'm John Cantley. In the last film in this series, we're in a city that has been at the heart of the fighting since summer 2012. Now, I hope by the last film in this series, he means that they have a new series that will be coming out with John Cantley <laughs> oh, God. rather than uh, the next film is him being decapitated. Used to be home to more than two million people and house some of the most ancient architecture in all of the Middle East. But now, after two years of bitter fighting, much of the city lies in ruins and many of the people have fled. This is a civilian area that has been bombed flat by two years of war. The area can... And they do have him. You can hear the rubble actually beneath his feet. That's what they're showing in the footage at the moment is him sort of climbing around through uh, bombed out buildings and such. Crunching Famous for indiscriminate bombing by the Assad Air Force, which has now been joined by American jets dropping bombs overhead and has left huge sections of this town and the surrounding area smashed to rubble. Today, we're inside Halab. What we're going to find out is if all this bomb, bombs, all this fighting, and all this destruction has even slowed down the advance of the Islamic State. So, of course, this is, uh, you know, their propaganda, and it's again called From Inside Halab. Their uh, propaganda here is essentially saying, you can bomb us, but we're still here, and we're still here in force. Uh, the previous videos, they've walked around um, a couple of other places like Kobane, and I think Mosul was one of the more recent ones. In Mosul, they showed that there were plenty of people still, you know, flittering about, doing their things, walking through shopping districts. The point of that last film was to show, at least the claim was, that everything is as normal in Mosul in that, uh, you know, despite the fact that the Islamic State is ostensibly... Uh, in control there that, you know, there aren't a bunch of people running terrified through in, throughout the streets that, um, you know, everything's relatively okay. And now this one they are going to, uh, the, the claim here is that they are going to be showing that uh, despite the incessant bombings over the last two years, ISIS is still standing strong. Now, is that true? I don't know. But this is the only footage I've ever seen from Halab. And so we'll continue with the audio track here in moments, and I'll describe to you the contents of this video as John Cantley, the alleged hostage of ISIS, is hosting a, you know, a, a kind of look inside their lifestyle there. 855, 450. For, uh, this will actually include an interview of uh, somebody mm. about Charlie Ebdo. 855, 450, freeze the number. It's Free Talk Live. Valentine's Day is coming soon. Guns80.com wanted to show you some lovin'. So they stripped their profits to the bone, lowered their prices to 400 bucks for their Ghost AR kits. Valentine's Day offer ends on the 15th, so don't delay. Return the love. Go to Guns80.com, order your Ghost AR-15 rifle kit. No dealers, background checks, no hassles. Deliver to your door. I call that love. Go to Guns80.com. That's 844-248-6780. Order now. Guns80.com. That's Guns80.com or 844-2-GUNS80. This is Holly Thomas, Group Vice President of Cause Marketing for Macy's. Our company is working together with the March of Dimes through March for Babies to raise money and awareness about the serious problem of premature birth in the U.S. That's why Macy's is committed to raising funds through our employees, customers, family and friends to improve the health of moms and babies everywhere. Won't you please join us in March for Babies? Start a team today at marchforbabies.org. Attention, have you been in a serious automobile accident? Then you need to call our attorneys now. We specialize in helping our clients get compensated for major auto injuries. If you've been in any type of car or motorcycle accident and you've been seriously injured, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation. Our attorneys have recovered millions and millions of dollars for injured clients. There are no out-of-pocket costs to you ever. We only receive a fee when we win your case. We are available 24-7. If you've been in an accident and been 
seriously injured, make this free call to our attorneys now. Call the Personal Injury Center at 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. That's 800-648-9173. This ad is paid for by participating member law firms. We are not an attorney referral service. Representation may not be... This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something facebook.freetalklive.com free press publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in june 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace freedom love and liberty fpp also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom oriented material FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. You can bring up anything that you'd like. Coming up, Johnson in a flame war on Facebook. (laughs) Me? What? What's new? Um, Well, yeah, you wanted to talk about your flame war, Johnson, so we'll get into that. Plus, of course, you can bring up anything you'd like, and you can join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. And uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go now to freedomsphoenix.com. Sign up for their free daily dispatch. Again, that's freedomsphoenix.com. As we continue with John Cantley hosting from uh, Halab. Now, I don't know. I didn't even take a, take a, take the time to look and see where that is. I presume it's in Iraq, but uh, you'll have to do that research on your own. Uh, <laughs> I've got the uh, video here from heavy.com. We've been playing this series of videos from ISIS with John Cantley as their host. He is Apparently, their prisoner, at least that's how he's been represented. He's been, you know, allegedly was kidnapped back in 2012 and started hosting these videos for ISIS in late 2014. And we've been playing them as we've become aware of them here. And this one just came out a couple of days ago. So here's the latest. He's inside a city that he describes as being bombed indiscriminately over the last couple of years and is going to ostensibly show how it is ISIS is still there and still strong. So here's the uh, the remainder or more of the propaganda video from ISIS. The advance and stretch of the Islamic State is in fact remarkable and breathtaking. Driving into Halib, <laughs> one can truly appreciate firsthand the large swathes of territory liberated and in control of the Mujahideen. Agriculture is a key driver here in Halib tilled land stretches as far as the eye can see, sown to feed not just the people of Halib, but also its thriving economy. 
grain silos are packed to the rafters with wheat reserves which are then bagged and delivered at bottom low prices. Livestock leisurely graze on the lush green grass, a beautiful beginning to a delicious end here in Halab's vibrant and colourful markets. Most impressive though are all the minarets that rise high announcing the call to prayer alongside the masjids that stand in full glory. But what really matters is what goes on inside. So let's go and take a look. So what they were showing throughout that clip was uh, different people kind of at work. Uh, so there are still people in Halab and they are still making a living and things are still going on. That's the message, uh, again, being portrayed, which is similar to previous iterations of these videos, showing people at work, showing the fields, you know, the green uh, stuff being grown. And so the idea being that things are still moving along here, despite the aggression of the United States government. Now they're in some sort of a school. Now, one of the common accusations of the West is that under an Islamic state, education will suffer. Religious studies and changes to the curriculum don't quite fit their image of progressive schooling. But here in Al-Bab, these young men here are learning Quran recital and languages. And with any luck, they will form the Mujahideen for the next generation in this region. And why wouldn't they? Yeah. Um, I was just thinking. I was just thinking to myself, actually, as I was listening, I was like, "Oh, well, I hear all the same mindless chanting I hear from the indoctrination camps here in the United States." Yeah, that's all we're talking about here. Except the difference in the United States is, is the state is the religion. In the United States, the federal government is the religion, the belief in the state, and it's not just in the U.S., but that that belief exists around the world. But that's what people really, truly believe in, and that make they feel like it makes them special. And here you have, again, uh, young people just, you know, routinely memorizing passages in the Quran, which, again, if that's your religious belief, you're certainly welcome to memorize your favorite religious documents. Um, but that's, you know, what they're pointing out here is that the, you know, education is uh, is continuing. Maybe it wouldn't be the education that the people in the United States would expect, but it's what they're doing. And, of course, you might as well expect they're also educating them on the horrors of the war brought to them by the United States for those of them that actually haven't experienced their loved ones being blown up and uh, destroyed by U.S. government artillery and such, uh, they can probably learn about that sort of thing right there in the classroom. Let's continue with more from John Cantley. Now floating around in the skies above us is a drone. I don't know if you can just see it up there above my right shoulder. Uh, but there were drones in Mosul, and now there are drones flying overhead here in Al Bab, just northeast of Halab. But life continues. The Mujahideen really don't care how many eyes in the sky are looking down on them. And uh, at some point, that drone will be taking photographs, dropping bombs, or firing missiles. But we're in the Can you imagine? Can you just imagine how horrifying that must be, and how just absolutely terrifying? Uh, it must be to know that there are these machines in the sky. Basically flying death machines. Yeah, that at any moment can rain death down upon you and your family and friends. I mean, that's just, it's just hard to really even, really envision what that might be like. I mean, it's like some sort of a crazy Terminator movie yeah. or something. Continuing. In the middle here of the market, which is a completely civilian area, and there's just been a large bomb strike on that building behind me. We heard the explosion. We were just about five minutes over that way. The fire brigade, the Islamic State fire brigade are here trying to clear up the mess, but it's absolute pandemonium. And all this follows a drone which we saw five minutes ago, and then Assad's air force comes in and drops bombs on the market. Now, as far as I know, the Syrian air force does not have drones. That must have been an American drone that was definitely a sad bomb dropping here on the market. So, what's going on? Someone is working with someone around here to drop bombs. Look around. It's smashed there. It's smashed there. The people are absolutely terrified from bombs being dropped by Assad's aircraft, yeah. but with American drones flying overhead. Okay. And what's the? And what's again? We're uh, we're taking his word for it, right? So we don't know right. if what he's showing us was actually just a, a bombing site. Um, but 
obviously when they're bombing these places, there are innocent people who are getting killed. And that's why it's not hard to continue to recruit new young people, as they were referring to earlier, the next generation of the Mujahideen. Uh, they're being trained there right now. And it's because bombs are going off in the streets. It's because people are losing body parts uh, in these explosions. And they're, it's happening to people they care about. If that were happening to people you cared about, you might be really angry, too. You might be willing to strap something to you and walk in somewhere. But where are the victims, Ian? How can you possibly be blaming the victims? They started this on 9 11. <laughs> <laughs> ISIS didn't even exist on 9 11. And of course, the you know the truth is that ISIS exists because of the U.S. government's aggressions over there. We've been told we've got to get out of this area because that drone's in the sky. They might hit this area again. So we've got to get out of here. Everyone's been told to clear the streets. So we got to go. Come on, let's go. It would be ironic, wouldn't it, if uh, while filming one of these episodes, John Cantley actually gets caught in, a, in an explosion from yeah. the uh, the bombing raids? That would not be good. No. Um, you know, I, the only reason why I brought that up about the uh, who started it or whatnot or the, the blaming the victim is just because, you know, it's still shocking to me how many people are unaware of the fact that the United States has been basically creaming the Middle East since the 60s and, and mm. before then even. Yeah, yeah, through president after president in various different levels of creamage. You're absolutely right. More from uh, Inside Halab with John Cantley continuing. Despite all this destruction, Halab remains a place of serenity and surreal beauty. The Mujahideen are not phased by the bombings at all and continue to conduct classes on the banks of the Euphrates River or maybe a little fishing or just enjoying a relaxing cup of tea back in town. And despite the bombings we just saw, people are still getting on with it. They continue to build new dwellings out of this gorgeous white stone that Halab is so famous for. So we're seeing a video just kind of with pans of various different areas of Halab. Uh, there was some scenes with some of the Mujahideen fighters, uh, the ISIS fighters, sort of sitting around uh, enjoying each other's company. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Now, that doesn't mean these men aren't doing monstrous things. I don't want it to sound like I think they're just a bunch of good guys. These people are calling themselves a state for a reason. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of 
where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free to bring up whatever you'd like. The number is 855-450-FREE. We are sharing with you the audio track from the latest video from ISIS, or that's what they're claiming. And they've got John Cantley, who is their last remaining ostensibly British hostage. Uh, he's been hosting a series of videos that uh, is allegedly put out by ISIS. And uh, we're going to continue that here in a moment to give you kind of the other side of the story. Obviously, you're going to get the U.S. government's side from the U.S. mainstream media. And uh, this is a viewpoint that is fairly uncommon out there in mainstream media reports. And that is, well, what does ISIS have to say for themselves. And that's kind of the point of this video series. You can believe whatever you want out of this. I don't know what the truth is. Just presenting this as the other side. So we continue here with that. We're in the middle of this video called Inside Halab. And for some reason, it's being reported here at heavy.com is Inside Aleppo. I'm not sure if that's another name for Halab. But anyway, it's called Inside Halab when you're actually watching the video. They're showing people, uh, even though this city has been bombed, they say, for two years, and they show much of the rubble uh, in the city, they're showing that it's being rebuilt, that people are still out and about. They're doing things. They, you know, they're, they're running businesses. And, uh, and, you know, life goes on, as he's pointing out, that the, that the ISIS folks are still there uh, and still present throughout the city. So we continue here as they're showing some of the uh, the, uh, the architecture and the beauty of Halab. We uh, continue the video here. It is used extensively here in single villa homes to big city apartment buildings. And all over Halab's countryside and inside its towns, which are under the control of the Islamic State. You could see the flag, actually, what they were showing there. They were going down the street and they're driving down the street and there's out, you know, sort of like you would see the American flag in a kind of typical American town in various different locations, you know, like on Main Street, along Main Street, that kind of thing. You see the Islamic State flag here. So that's their way of showing that, you know, they're, they're still around. They're not, they haven't gone anywhere. The standard of the caliphate flutters high. It is the Sharia law that rules here. So let us explore this law further inside a Sharia court of the Islamic State. Of course, where you have the Islamic State, you have Sharia law. It is one of the absolute principles why they fight. And it is a very different rule of law to that which went before. It is 1,400 years old, and it is the rule Doesn't that kind of mean that it's not different? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go on. The rule of Allah, and therefore it cannot be changed. Unlike the laws of well, but I imagine it is interpreted fairly differently. So when we've talked about 
uh, Sharia law in the past. I'm not going to represent myself as any kind of an expert, but we have had folks on from uh, Muslims for Liberty, like Davi Barker and uh, Will Coley, and they've talked about this idea of Sharia law. Of course, the you know if you go with the Fox News definition of this, it sounds like it's some sort of set of uh, rules that justifies murder. Uh, and violence, but they say that that's not the case at all, that Sharia law in a lot of ways is just about how to worship uh, in in Islam. So let's continue and get uh, John Kentley and ISIS's explanation of it. Democratic countries which change to fit every circumstance or to fit every different week, uh, the rules of Sharia are remarkably simple. For example, if you are convicted of robbery with the correct number of witnesses and such forth, you have your hand cut off. Sounds harsh, but you're not going to commit the same crime again, and it will dissuade others from doing the same. This is a waiting is room. Is it really true, though? Civilian... I mean, that's something that, that's... <laughs> I was just thinking, like, yeah, you will then go out and steal the parts for a prosthetic hand and then continue to rob <laughs> indiscriminately. Because robbing is all you know. Um, you know, that's a big question that is a discussion had here in the United States. And by the way, there are plenty of people who are in the United States who are not Muslim who would also agree with the idea of eye for an eye. There are a lot of people who are of the Christian religion, I suspect, that would agree with eye for an eye, that uh, whether they're Christian or not, uh, this isn't an uncommon view in the United States. It's not the system. It's not what they do. Here they'll lock somebody in a jail cell and, you know. No, because we're not barbaric monsters. We're not barbaric monsters. Who's not barbaric monsters? The, the, we're not cutting, you're not chopping people's hands off, despite whatever religion du jour wants us to do. You know, like we, we have a system that's at least slightly better. <laughs> Yeah, it is a little bit more humane, although there are plenty of inhumane things within it, right? I mean, you've got people like Ross Ulbricht who are going to be spending, you know, he'll likely be in prison for the rest of his life for running a website. So, you know, you describe barbarism. I mean, I guess, is it only barbarism if somebody's hand gets chopped off or their body is physically mutilated? Yes. Is that right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) So uh, going on, but 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 it is true that that viewpoint. If you just went out there, I bet you, if you went out and did like an, a man on the street survey of people in the United States, it would not be an insignificant portion of them who would agree with some sort of a statement like, right. "We should go to a system where people get their hands cut off if they commit theft." I bet you, you'd get, I don't know, what twenty percent, maybe. I don't think you're going to get as high of a system of a uh, percentage of people that say, "If a woman is raped, she should be stoned to death for you know." Being a slut. <laughs> well, yeah, that's definitely the case. Wait to see a Sharia court judge. And like any other waiting room of any other law court in the world, they're playing TV in the background. This being the Islamic State, they're playing Islamic State videos. And I must say, they're a lot more entertaining than watching the news at six. We're on the outskirts of the town of Akhtadin in Halab's northeastern province. This is where the Islamic State starts and runs all the way over to Mosul. By the way, that last scene about the court, all they really showed was the waiting room. So you didn't, <laughs> you didn't really get to see anything in the courtroom, what was going on there. In I'd Iraq. like to see Vice cover this. Cover Halab, you mean? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? And I wonder if they have done anything like that. I mean, I don't watch everything on the Vice channel. There's a lot of content over at Vice. Those guys follow uh, you know, a lot of different stories around the world. And I've certainly seen stories on Vice about these videos. You know, actually, but I don't know if I've seen any original Vice reporting. I'm actually surprised that Vice hasn't done a report on Gein. They allegedly did send someone to Porkfest last year. Interesting. That's what I heard, but I heard that never turned into anything. Huh. Let's go on. It is a complex situation, and Mujahideen have been gathering here in anticipation of the fight ahead, and there's more U.S. airstrikes overhead. So let's go in and talk to the Mujahideen and find out what's been going on. They're somewhere on the outskirts of the There's city. been an increase in the number of U.S. airstrikes over Islamic State territory. How do these strikes affect the Mujahideen? فَإِنَّ الْحِلْفَ الصَّلِيبِي I will uh, translate for you here. Let me turn him down. I didn't know you spoke Arabic. Let's do it. There's uh, <laughs> more U.S. airstrikes overhead. So let's go in and talk right. to the Mujahideen and find out what's been going on. Sorry about that. 
There's been an increase in the number of U.S. airstrikes over Islamic State territory. How do these strikes affect the Mujahideen? He says, the Crusader Alliance and disbelieving West have not understood the nature of this religion, nor the nature of its people who defend it. It's this religion. If this religion was dependent upon people, it would have died when Muhammad uh, passed away, or when the rightly guided Kufa passed away. Nah, he's going too damn fast. Our contemporary history also proves this. Sak Abu Musab al Zakari was killed, yet the fighting did not stop. And after him, Abu Umar al Baghdadi and Abu Hamza al Muhar, yet the fighting did not stop. Rather, it became more severe and expanded. All praise is due to Allah. They did not carry on this path except for this goal to get killed for Allah's cause. Lest the disbelieving West know that the death of the leaders of jihad only emboldens and motivates us upon this path by Allah's permission. So what he's saying there is that you can keep killing the heads, right? Every now and then you'll hear news stories in the United States like, Today, the U.S. reported they had killed in a drone strike the number two man in ISIS. I mean, we've heard these stories for a decade. Back before it was ISIS, it was Al-Qaeda. And you heard stories about the number two guy in Al-Qaeda. We got the number one guy. Of course, you know, Osama bin Laden eventually allegedly killed right. by the U.S. Trained and, by the CIA. <laughs> yeah, and, and so over time, they keep killing the number two and number one guys. And this this fighter is saying, look, we're just being emboldened by this. You, you are doing what... We believe that you are here to do, and we're expecting these kind of things, and it's not dissuading us any further. This is what they're living for. They're living for this conflict, and the U.S. government's uh, feeding right into it. He continues, the historic, this is the, the guy being interviewed, the, he says, quote, the historical examples of this are many. Every time one of our leaders is killed, tens, rather hundreds, succeed him and replace him as leaders upon his path. This is the religion of Allah. It is not affected. Uh, he says it is not affected by, uh, it went too fast. <laughs> not affected. I'll let you know here in a moment. I had to jump it back. Not affected by the death of any person. So this is bigger than the individuals involved, is what he's saying. Your bombs won't stop it. 855-450 free. Share your thoughts as we continue. More on the way on Free Talk Live. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24 hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 hour, stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time, get a free pound to try out the subscription, cancel anytime, coffee.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
from Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, February 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.63 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,221 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $220. Antiwar.com reports with the ongoing ceasefire negotiations in Minsk facing an uncertain outcome, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko is threatening to introduce martial law in all territories of Ukraine if the talks fail. The comments are in the context of a war that is going increasingly poorly for the government, which launched an offensive against the rebels last month and is quickly losing even more ground to them. While Poroshenko warns the situation could quickly spiral out of control, it's not clear what he hopes to gain by threatening to give the military effective executive control over the entire nation. After all, the rebels have control over their own territory in Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast, and transitioning alleged control from civilian officials who are using the military and unable to conquer them, or just turning it over to the same military that isn't winning the war now. The only places the military could practically take over are of the western three quarters of the country, which are already under government control. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports police in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, said three Muslim students were shot over a parking dispute, though the father of two of the victims has called the incident a hate crime. Police arrested Craig Stephen Hicks after he allegedly shot to death three students at a condominium complex near the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, on Tuesday. Police said the incident stemmed from a parking dispute between Hicks and the three students. The police said in a statement, Our preliminary investigation indicates that the crime was motivated by an ongoing neighbor dispute over parking. Chapel Hill Police Chief Chris Blue said in a statement, We understand the concerns about the possibility that this was hate motivated, and we will exhaust every lead to determine if that is the case. Dr. Muhammad Abu Salha, the father of two of the victims, said he believes Hicks killed his daughters and son-in-law because they were Muslim, saying it was execution style, a bullet in every head. This was not a dispute over a parking space. This was a hate crime. This man had picked on my daughter and her husband a couple of times before, and he talked with them with his gun in his belt. And they were uncomfortable with him, but they did not know he would go this far. The FBI is assisting local law enforcement with the investigation. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo, and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. The Coleman Times from Alabama reports a Prattville, Alabama woman was charged with disorderly conduct Tuesday after offering to perform a same-sex wedding inside a courthouse. Otaga County Sheriff Joe Sedinger says Anne Suzanne DiPrizio was arrested in the probate office when a dispute occurred between her and probate judge Alfred Booth after two women obtained a marriage license. The sheriff said DiPrizio identified herself as a minister and offered to marry the women. Booth has not been allowing marriage ceremonies in his office since same-sex marriage became legal in Alabama. Sedinger said the judge called deputies who found the woman kneeling and refusing to leave in an apparent protest. Sedinger said DiPrizio was released on $1,000 bail. The U.S. Supreme Court on Monday announced it would not block same-sex marriages from taking place in Alabama. The High Court will hear oral arguments in April and is expected to issue a ruling by June regarding whether same-sex couples nationwide have a fundamental right to marry and whether states can ban such unions. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
Inclement weather prevents a liar from getting to work, and a lunchbox is mostly medication. Sources across the nation impatiently reported today that the 24-hour news cycle seemed to be taking forever, telling reporters that the continuous coverage from MSNBC, CNN, and other news sources was simply not continuous enough. Frustrated Americans demanded more panel coverage, around-the-clock bulletins, and breaking reactions from Twitter. It's like, sure, I have five channels of unending news updates constantly flooding my screen, but each one of those only has one slow-moving news ticker. Why not three or four running at triple speed? Honestly, these networks need to understand that I can't just wait around all day for minute-by-minute -minute coverage. And in this week's science news, a new report finds that lake ice grows safer to venture out on with each beer consumed. In other news, the beauty industry announces a new initiative to make women self-conscious about their palms. A beautiful cinnamon bun is too good for this world, too pure. And a picky eater is 38. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Dial on in toll free to bring up anything you'd like at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we have waiting for you there. Uh, once again, that is freetalklive.com. With you tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Johnson. For those of you just tuning in, we have been playing for you the latest video from ISIS, uh, allegedly. Uh, hosted by John Cantley, who is their apparently last remaining British hostage. He's managed to keep his head, uh, thankfully, by hosting this series of what I would call fairly interesting propaganda videos uh, from ISIS. They're well-produced. I don't think I mentioned that yet uh, tonight. These are well-edited. They look like they could have been you know, plucked right out of Frontline or something like that. You know, one of these online, or not online, but one of these television news magazine right. shows. Very, very well-produced, well-edited. You know, they've got the, the whiz-bang graphic transitions and everything, the sound effects, the whoosh, you know, that stuff. And uh, so it's very watchable. And he's walking around through different cities in the last few in the series. Initially, they just had him sitting in front of a desk, sort of reading a script. Uh, in the last few they've done, they've had him dressed up sort of like a reporter and walking around cities like Kobane and Mosul and now Halab, where he has been showing that despite bombing raids that have been killing all kinds of people, uh, that uh, life continues to go on. F people are rebuilding. Businesses are uh, continuing to do business. And the Islamic State is continuing to be in control, showing, you know, the Mujahideen fighters. They just had an interview with one of them who pointed out that you can keep killing you being the federal government of the United States. He's essentially saying, go ahead, keep killing the, the leaders of the Islamic State and we'll just keep replacing them. Every time you kill one of them, we just recruit 100 more people. And whether you believe the numbers or not, it's certainly true that over time, the U.S. government has continued to announce the executions of various individuals ostensibly associated with ISIS or al-Qaeda. And it hasn't done anything to dampen the violence. It hasn't stopped the rise of this group of, uh, of killers. Now, they're calling themselves the Islamic State because they want to be a state, too. They want to have the benefits of being a state to be able to tax and rule over people. And I don't support the idea of the state, but I don't see any reason why they shouldn't be considered a state. They're a violent gang of people who's forcing their way upon others. That's what the state is. That's what it does. Here in the United States, they have this, uh, this veneer of appropriateness that uh, sort of runs over all of it, the aura of legitimacy, if you will. And it's not really any different. The fundamental differences are not there between the U.S. federal government and the Islamic State. It's just the Islamic State's newer. And it's always harder for a newer group of people calling themselves a state to get recognized as a state around the world. So we're about two-thirds of the way, maybe even three-fourths of the way through this video. It's about 12 minutes long. We're in the nine-minute range here. We're going to continue now. Meanwhile, back in Europe, David Cameron of Britain, his Christmas speech, talked of Christian values. On Christmas Day, thousands in our armed forces will be protecting people and entire communities from the threat of terrorism, he said. But as we saw with the attack on the market here, with US drones flying overhead and very possibly coordinating the bomb attack on the market itself, 
It's the West who are acting aggressively. The people of Halep just want to get on with their lives in peace. And that is more possible now since the Islamic State took over. The media points that the Islamic State has... Unless, of course, you happen to have a different religious <laughs> viewpoint uh, as the Islamic State, in which case then they might behead you. Uh, but his point is made here that there is business going on, and obviously in a, in a city, and I don't know what the population of Halab is, but they were in Mosul, which I think was the second most populated uh, in Iraq. But in uh, in a city like this, there's a lot of people that just... That's what they're there for is, you know, not to impose their will on anyone, but they just want to run their lives and raise their families just like anyone in the United States would want to do. And right. why shouldn't they be left alone in order to do that? And he's absolutely right that it's the U.S. government and the British governments that are the aggressors in this in this case. Period. Set up in Halib and all around the other towns where they hand out media and news information. Thank you very much indeed. The idea is that it counters the news that comes out from the West, and so it gives the people here on the ground an idea of what the Islamic State is really doing and not the distorted view that people get from the Western <laughs> media. Well, it's not to suggest that this isn't a distorted view right. as well, but he is uh, showing here the, foot the footage has what is essentially... the. Uh, I don't know if you want to call it a magazine stand or the equivalent of a magazine stand, but it's like a little hut where uh, there's like an opening and a guy is sitting back there but, but behind two Toshiba laptops and handing out propaganda to people as they come by. And of course, what made all the headlines in the Western media recently were the attacks carried out in France. So it is only fitting to close with a few words from a French mujahid living here in Halab. I'm going to try to translate this again. Firstly, may blessings... Oh, damn it. Uh, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most benefic uh, beneficent. These three attacks only made us happy. He's talking about Charlie Hebdo. And every time we hear about one or more brothers defending their religion... In the West, we only feel delighted. We learned a few days ago about these attacks, and this is what delighted us. And we heard about the other brothers who did the same and carried out the attacks. Before this attack, it was Muhammad Mera, we asked uh, Allah, who carried out an exceptional operation. Uh, and emboldened all my brothers in France, all my brothers in the West, to defend their religion. Presently, Allah has not facilitated for you, Hijra, to our state. No problem. Defend your religion where you are. Kill them with knives. At the very least, strike them in the face. It's not a very nice person. <laughs> for the religion of Allah needs you more than you think. You are sitting on your couches while today Muslims are being slaughtered in every corner of the world. What will be your excuse before Allah? What is your excuse when this orphan loses her family and you did not get up to defend her? So I call you to either come here or defend your religion where you are. To all my brothers in France, I say to them, start carrying out individual attacks. Be wolves on the earth. For each man amongst you can be equivalent to an army. And I say to all the nations of the West that have resolved to attack us, we have also come to strike you, and we are already there to attack you. The Muslims in the West number in the millions, and they are capable of inflicting mass carnage. But, I'd like to in, in, uh, interrupt him here for a moment, the Muslims in the West, while they uh, number in the millions, aren't violent killers. They're not people who believe the same version of Islam as these maniacs do, as these people who have no problem stabbing someone in, a, in the face. Uh, if they did, then we would actually see more terrorism. Right. We would see people being murdered and they're having their throats slit and all of those things, you know, bombs going off here in the United States. There are Muslims all over the place here. But Muslim uh, folks that I've known have been peaceful people. And the religion is a, a religion of peace, as many religions are, but then are interpreted in different ways and in very radical and violent ways by certain very, very small sects. He has a, just a few more words here going on with the interview with the maniac. 
Quote, so I call on them to move forward and do what is obligatory on them in support of their religion. I mean, the irony here... That's the, the end. The irony here that I think is, like, immediately is that, you know, like... No, these people, they're, they're, you know, Christianity is the real religion of peace. We need to, you know, they, obviously these people have problems. We need to bomb them. Yeah. Like that's the idea of a religion of peace. <laughs> it, right. I mean, both of those religions have been bastardized from what could be argued was their original intention. And that's the same thing is true about Buddhism, which originally wasn't even supposed to be a religion, but it has become that uh, in contrary to Buddha's wishes. So over time... These religions created and instituted by men um, are corrupted by those same men or different men along the lines. And, and then you've got people bombing each other and stabbing each other as a result of it. It's just insane. We'll continue here. Uh, that's the video called uh, From Inside Halab. We'll link to it on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. You can take it and check it out on your own and share your thoughts here on the air. It's 603, oh, excuse me, not 603, 855 450 free. <laughs> There's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special super early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through early March, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here to bring up anything you'd like at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, Johnson versus somebody on the internet. <laughs> we'll uh, tell you more about that. Just got- generic status. It's yeah. just a conversation with a status is what I want to bring up. And you- I think it's particularly... Uh, Makes sense after what we were just talking about. With sure. This, you know. Let's talk about that here in a moment. Uh, also want to tell you about Vegas.com. They really do serve up Vegas from the inside because unlike other travel sites, the people running the website, they're actually from Vegas. They live, work, and party in Vegas. They know the people that set the deals and the second prices drop vegas.com drops them on their site in real time plus they give you insider tips on where to stay and what to do when you're there go to vegas.com right now and enter our code ftl in the promo box at checkout to receive an extra 10 percent off of everything except the air hotel packages that's because they they just can't negotiate a discount like that with airlines but everything on the site except the air hotel packages you save 10 percent by using code f TL over at Vegas.com. Go get your bonus savings on hotels and shows with code FTL. I did look, by the way, at some of the shows there. And I've uh, always been interested in going to see Penn and Teller. Yeah. Uh, if you know, if I ever go to Vegas, and uh, so I you know check their prices and the prices over at Vegas.com. The for the the prices for the tickets for Penn and Teller they're cheaper than going through Penn and Teller's own website. Uh, so go and check it out at Vegas.com. Wait, have you ever been to Vegas? I've not. Wow. Have you? Yes. Okay. A couple times. So if you're going to go back, oh, you're yeah. going for the first time, Vegas.com, code I'm FTL. Th- I'm very interested in this ad. In fact, I uh, just as a fun thing to Google in case you're interested in Vegas, um, there's an artist by the name of La Forêt, La Forêt, uh, F-O-R-E-T, who recently took these amazing aerial photographs, like these hmm. really high-resolution, amazing aerial oh, photographs Vegas? of Vegas. They're hard to describe. He kind of used this like... Uh, you know, large format photography technique where you blur things and it makes things almost look like toys. It's hmm. like, a, you know, where you blur the top and bottom of the photograph. And he did some of that. Like, you know, it's called the uh, tilt shifting, I think, a photograph. And um, they're just really cool. I mean, some of the, just the colors and whatnot that you see from all the lights are just... they're. And gorgeous. the artist was called what? Uh, La Forette. Maybe you could find that and uh, send oh, me sure. a link or we yeah. can put it up on our Facebook, Google Plus and all that. So again, Vegas.com, code FTL to get 10% off pretty much everything there. Uh, continuing here, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So, Johnson, you got into a Facebook argument, which is not uncommon uh, for you. <laughs> and uh, I like myself a good flame war every now and again. So what was it that sparked this, and uh, and where did it happen? So on one of my fa- – well, I don't want to give away names necessarily because yeah. I don't. it doesn't really matter. Just a really personal matter. F- a friend of yours? Yeah, personal okay. friend of mine. That's uh, not who you were arguing free with. Free stater. No, 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 no. Um, you know, and she happens to be friends with some statists, apparently. Mm, okay. And so the, she posted an image from uh, Lee Camp. I don't know who that is. I, I've heard the name before. I don't know if it's like a pundit or something like that. But uh, the the image that was posted was from uh, a Facebook page called Common Culture Midwest. And it says, new rule. If you relocate your business outside of the U.S. to avoid paying your fair share of taxes, Ugh. you will no longer be permitted to sell your products or services on American soil. Uh, so that rule doesn't actually exist. That's just them saying, yeah, they, oh, we they, think this should be the case. Yeah, and they followed up. They're like, approve, disapprove, leave a comment so it's like below. like a little poll thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, and this is a thread which... This uh, is a, so it's about protectionism. The, the question is, should people who... Uh, make products in the United States be allowed, or make products outside of the United States be allowed to sell them in the United States? Right. Yeah, and, you know, or just 
it's also about fair share of taxes, which I thought was kind of interesting. Okay. And some other folks jumped into this thread. I mean, Larkin Rose was in this thread. That's and a, uh, set, set, relatively well-known yep. libertarian type. He jumped in and said, equivalent question, if you flee some big city to avoid the extortion shakedown of the local mafia there, should you be allowed to sell anything to anyone else who lives in that city? I.e., should you be allowed to trade with any other victims of that extortion racket? Yeah, that's a good way to really narrow that down. And uh, he says, um, yes, uh, duh. And uh, it costs around $2,300 just to legally escape the USSA now. Mm Mm-hmm. So, and then at some point, I jumped in and I said, actually, no, this rule makes perfect sense. Since taxes are stolen money, the fair share is none at all. <laughs> so I've never heard that one before. That's good. So I'm like, so if you uh, locate your business outside of the U.S., it doesn't matter because paying any amount of taxes is not fair. It's unfair, sure. Right. And so I got, definition. I got a comment back by, I'll call him, statist. Okay. <laughs> Status says, Johnson, a tad exaggerated, don't you think? How do we pay for our defense, interstate highway infrastructure, national parks, etc., oh, without boy. taxes of some sort? We should pay a little tax, but everyone should have to pay the exact same percentage. Let's put the fair back into fair share. <laughs> Trotting out all the old <laughs> yeah. excuses for the state. This is why I wanted to bring this in as, as prep, because I thought it's like, oh, this is just perfect. I mean, this is just generic argument with status one-on-one. Yeah. So then I wrote, I'm like, how about with user fees instead of violently stealing from people? A tad immoral, don't you think? What? Government doesn't steal from people. <laughs> well, here's, here's status's reply. User fees on what? So you think tolls on every road we have is okay? My God, you libertarians. <laughs> No, and, and by the way, just to interrupt, I mean, no, I don't think that most people want to pay tolls. I think that right. tolls are terrible. How about we come up with some alternatives like, oh, I don't mm-hmm. know, billboards right. or something else. So he says, can you imagine the cost of the infrastructure for that? How would we pay for the infrastructure then? If you pass all this to the states, uh, then the states will tax you for it. So what is the difference? <laughs> the only thing he can envision <laughs> is that it goes from the federal government to the states right. as far as you know, decentralizing. He's like, how do you pay for military with user fees? Taxes help you pay for us to make the country livable and to protect us. They've just Ridiculous. Been, been allowed to take it way too far, and it needs to get reined in. Oh, so who is this guy? He's like a small government conservative or I something like so. that? I guess so, yeah, okay. I guess so. Uh, and I said, what is the difference? The difference is that people using things, you know, I quote, I'm quoting him when he said, what is the difference? I said, well, the difference is that people using the things that they pay, pay for will be doing so voluntarily. What is so hard about the idea of not forcibly stealing from people at gunpoint? Taxes help pay for us to make, oh, I'm quoting him again. He says, taxes help pay for us to make our country livable and protect us. No, they don't. Uh, by the way, I'd rather. Yeah, it's not the <laughs> it's not the government that makes the country livable. It's the people who provide products and services on their own voluntary on a voluntary basis, a consensual basis, that makes the pro- the uh, this place livable. Right. It, it, I mean, to the extent that the government stays out is what makes this a good place to live. And here's the thing: where the money thing that he the money argument that he's coming from, I think, is weird. I'm like, by the way, I'd rather pay for infrastructure than stormtroopers. It's time for like 90% of these thugs to find gainful employment. The same goes for the bureaucrats that generate nothing but mountains of paperwork, sucking the productivity out of every industry they touch. Example, I'd like doctors to be free again and healthcare to be affordable. That means that if the that the government needs to f off. These the Affordable Health Care Act totally expected that like most other government programs, it does exactly the opposite things mm. that it was supposedly attend- intended to do. Meaning making healthcare more difficult to acquire and more expensive. Right. And I said the irony being that Statist seems to be unaware of Easy Pass, which was implemented by a private company that somehow managed to cover the cost of all that insane infrastructure they built. <laughs> insane how the market comes up with solutions you never thought of to fix problems that you might not have even been aware of. Eh? And we'll come back with more. I, You've got more, right? Yeah, I got right. called out uh, the, on my. Out. I'd like to be doctors to be free again, and and my friend asked, "When were doctors free, Johnson?" Hmm. <laughs> we'll come and back I with more that. here in moments. Eight fifty five, four fifty free, and then what about people who challenge authority? What do they have in common? Some interesting science on the way. It's Free Talk Live. Are you hungry for delicious, nutritious, rich, and satisfying home cooked meals? Discover the Vita Clay Four in One Smart Organic Cooker. 
Unglazed Zisha Clay, an ancient secret that makes this fast multi-cooker so special. Infusing your food with incredible flavors, perfect texture, vitamins and minerals for your good health. It's a slow cooker, rice cooker, a steamer, plus a yogurt maker. Go to VitaClayChef.com and enter promo code RADIO20 for 20% off at checkout. That's VitaClayChef.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists, get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98 they're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of slingbow a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool feel the thrill only at slingbow.com every 44 seconds someone in the United States suffers a heart attack in nine out of 10 instances, the heart attack victim will fail to theatrically stumble to the ground and grasp their chest. Don't be a statistic. A heart attack occurs when oxygenated blood is obstructed from flowing properly to the heart muscle and requires victims to act quickly by lurching around with one hand clutching their chest and the other hand reaching out for drapes, blinds, or tablecloths to violently yank out. The first 30 seconds of a heart attack is a critical window. If standing at the time of an attack, move into what is known as the L position by doubling over and grimacing in an unnaturally strained fashion. Use one outstretched hand to grasp for support as you stumble forward, while using the other trembling arm to sweep everything off a table. is the Onion News Network. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free. Bring up anything you want right here at 855-450-FREE. We've got Johnson versus some Facebook status. <laughs> uh, whatever. You can just call him textbook Facebook status because he's uh, just kind of trotting out all the same old arguments against libertarianism. And we'll continue with that here in a moment. But also want to let you know about ExpressCoin.com, the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies. Bitcoins, Litecoin, Dogecoin, they're all available there over at ExpressCoin.com. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. Their fees are probably the best you're going to find out there. 
They're also a licensed money services business, so they've jumped through those governmental hoops, so you don't have to worry about that nonsense. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer by going to ExpressCoin.com, whether you're in the United States or Canada. Again, that's ExpressCoin.com, plus they've got an app for your smartphone. Use coupon code FTL over at ExpressCoin.com and get up to $40 worth of your favorite cryptocurrency with no fee at all which is an awesome deal. So again, expresscoin.com, coupon code is FTL. Johnson, you got into a Facebook spat with someone you don't know today. Uh, he's kind of trotting out all the standard arguments about why freedom is terrible and we need the state to protect us and make roads. I love these textbook arguments. So I, I got called out at the end because I had said, that, you know, I'd like doctors to be free again, you know, and, and uh, yeah. I, I got called out by my friend who's like, you know, when were doctors free, Johnson? And I, I kind of had to sheepishly be like, yeah, well, you know, okay. Free as in like free Relati price wise? Well, or free no, I mean like relatively free from paperwork. Yeah. You know, like freer to, you know, to make callous calls again, to do those types of things, to have their costs not be ridiculously driven up by the amount of uh, regulations. Tremendous and, compliance. Yeah, There's a yeah. lot of uh, money that's spent in any doctor's office on just having people whose job it is to fill out paperwork. These right. are not, you know, uh, people who are helping others get better. They're just filling out paperwork. Right. And I said, okay, so, I, you know, free from paperwork and mindless litigation, able to make house calls again and charge reasonable rates that people see rather than everyone being forced into insurance scams. And I... Uh, actually uh, dropped a link to Harry Brown's article about healthcare there. Oh, sweet. Um, so status says, so then Johnson, what is your plan for paying for the military? What is your plan for paying for power stations that provide electricity? What is <laughs> Because that's what the government, wait a minute, no, that's what power companies do. Right. Where does this guy live? I have no idea. Actually, I think Minnesota. Um what is your plan for paying for highways? Interesting you don't think of tolls as taxes, but income taxes are unacceptable. Taxes are taxes, man. But once again- Well, I do think of tolls as taxes. Yeah, yeah. I respond to that. And he's like, but once again, how do we pay for the military? Apparently, you never realize that the states supplement the building of toll rolls with, you guessed, taxes. You really want to have to pay a toll road to drive out of your driveway to the corner store? Mm. How practical is that? Right, because that's what the marketplace does, right? <laughs> that's what people in the marketplace do. They make it so you get nickel and dime to death with everything that you when you want to get from point A to point B. No, they want you to get from point A to point B, so then you can spend the money on whatever it is the people in the market want you to buy. That you know, it's like where you go into a grocery store, you don't get charged at the door to walk into a grocery store. They want you to come in. They want you to feel welcomed. They want you to hopefully buy something. But if you right. walk through, the, you can walk through the entire store and then walk out of the store and nobody's going to bat an eye at you. Yep. So th it's just ridiculous. So then uh, my friend Susanna, I'll drop her name, not, not the status name, but uh, um, she says, Roads can also have sponsors. Think outside the box, man. Sure. Right? And, and uh, Well, this is a tough box to think outside of. And yeah. of course, some it's a big people, box. Well, right. I mean, we. This is one of those areas where government has been in control throughout our entire lives, and it's difficult to get outside of your paradigm. And right. it's it's hard to really envision these things. And so the so a lot of these are good questions. Unfortunately, arguing with someone on Facebook isn't usually going to result in them having some sort of an aha moment. At least not at that moment. Not at in that time. moment. But I think it's I think it drops seeds. You know, it I could. Think. I mean, how seriously a Facebook argument is taken by other people, I I don't know. Personally, I find that reading it. On I've the had air people here is, come back to me over and over and over again, say, you know, like I had one guy re send me a friend request from something where he really? unfriended me years ago. No kidding. And came back and he's like, I was totally wrong. No way. Yeah, what, I've, now, and I've what had was that happen. That... It was over homeschooling. So what, what, I mean, do you know what it was that uh, made him realize years later that he was wrong? Was <laughs> I, turned, sort of... I turned his atheism, I took his atheism and like, you know, like on the homeschooling thing, I don't know exactly what I said, but it was something about the fact that like, you're still exposing your daughter to stuff with Santa Claus and he got so mad. <laughs> <laughs> he got so mad because he's like a really, really staunch atheist, atheist yeah. but yet he's exposing his daughter and lying to her about Santa Claus. I'm like, how is that any different? So, and, so you know, like a lot of atheists, he was opposed to homeschooling because yeah. Christians do it? Right. I see. Must be it must be bad if Christians do it. Right. right. And so I told I brought up the point about what he's doing with Santa Claus mm -hmm. and 
Oh, you didn't like it. Okay. But, you know, later he's like, you know, okay, homeschooling. I'm a, I, you know, and he came back and not only did he say he was wrong about homeschooling, but he is homeschooling. Now. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's so. good, Johnson. I, although <laughs> I have to say that it's more valuable to talk about these things on the radio because then we've got Oh, I'm better. sure I did at the time. No, but I mean, just, uh, as opposed to this oh, yeah, discussion yeah. on oh, Facebook, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's more useful to, to have this on the radio, which is One why... One person at a time, man. Yeah, that's the problem with Facebook. <laughs> Lighting the your... fires of liberty. So, yeah. uh, Statist went on to say, uh, no taxes doesn't work. It never will work. No taxes means that you depend on people who don't even want to earn their own living to help pay for things they use. What? We've seen, I don't know. We've seen how that works out. I think he's saying like that maybe some people leech off the system or something. Well, That's duh. how it works in this taxes system. Isn't long in the system before a, a very few people are paying 100% of the cost for everything else everyone uses. Problem mm. is they added too many things to the pot that we don't need, like welfare. <laughs> so how much would you pay to sponsor right. the $3 million of roads in your neighborhood? Any idea how much a highway costs? Way more than it should. Right. Uh, when governments make things, right. when governments contract with private companies to make things, they pay way more than what right. the market rate actually should be if there was true competition in the marketplace. Well, he asks another question. He's like, think about it. What if your neighbor, oh, Johnson, your neighbor, Johnson, decided that they don't want to pay for anything because that that is stealing at gunpoint, which, of course, if it were voluntary, it wouldn't be stealing at gunpoint. Right. If, it but, were, uh, right. if we actually transition to this voluntary order, this uh, consensual society that many of us in the voluntarist and libertarian movement would like to see happen— then the person who doesn't pay will just be an a-hole. <laughs> I think there'd be more solutions than that. And, and I, I expound on some of them. And he says, well, now all the roads are on you as one by one people stop paying for everything. I mean, is it voluntary? So, I mean, it is voluntary. So what the heck? There's nothing wrong with taxes being used responsibly. The problem is it is abused now badly. What we need is a way for citizens to limit the tax money collected annually without Congress having a say. So I don't think that most so I I don't think most of us are mad about taxes. We're mad about that they're abused and too high. If they were used responsibly and it was a low percentage, then I don't think most would have an issue. We seriously need to He's get probably right. control ta yeah, uh, control tax law outside of the politicians who get to allot it. Right. So just elect the right people and they'll reduce the tax burden and everything will be just splendid. Right. Sure. Yep. So my friend jumped in and said, taxes are uh, theft and slavery. You have no right to the fruits of my labor, nor I yours, unless we voluntarily agreed voluntarily. But Johnson, agreed what to about share. the people who won't pay? What about the people who won't pay? I mean, well, that there are going to be people in the absence of the coercive state who decide they want to hoard their money, that they don't value a community and they're not interested in helping with any of these projects of, like, let's say, clearing the roads. Maybe they'll stand in front of the snow plows in uh, protest. Or okay. Like well, so, so here's I skipped. Let me skip to my answer to that particular uh, batch of questions of his. So I said, uh, so he says, and I quote him. So then, Johnson, what is your plan for paying the military? Have people that want warriors pay for warriors. What do you? What is your plan for paying for power stations that provide electricity? Have people that want electricity pay for electricity? How do you plan for That's paying for today. Have people that want to drive on roads pay for them? He, and then he, I'm answering his thing where he says, "Interesting how you don't think of tolls as taxes." And I'm like, "Incorrect. I absolutely do. Current coal tolls are collected by the state institutions that stole the ownership of the private roads. Right? They Pri stole the they stole the land for the roads. They stole the roads themselves, and in many cases, and then they continue to tax people on them by charging tolls. Yep. I said private roads might even be able to do away with tolls entirely by selling information about traffic flow or selling ad space on billboards on the property." You you are seeing this through myopic and violent a myopic and violent viewpoint, and so only see the top-down hierarchical, easy theft-based solutions first, rather than seeing the win-win sort of scenarios that the market creates. And then I had more Great to point. say. There's more on the way here with Johnson versus the Facebook status. <laughs> Eight fifty-five, four fifty-three. You take control. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24 hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort allergy 24 hour, stops more of what makes you miserable. Uses directed. 
Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Wall & Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Wall & Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall & Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com. You can get interactive there and create the content that you'll find right there on the front page of the website. So maybe you found something online that you think is interesting that you want to share with our listeners and perhaps maybe get us to talk about it on the radio. You can submit it over there at freetalklive.com via our Reddit-based system. It's totally free to do that. Uh, so go there. Get interactive at freetalklive.com. Hey, you've heard about Bitcoin, and maybe you've heard about blockchains as well, but what does it mean for you? Well, you can head down to the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference 
and find out. It's happening at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, Texas, March 28th and 29th. It's going to be a great weekend conference at a new location. Last year was out at a racetrack kind of on the outskirts of Austin. This is going to be the heart of downtown Austin. I'm excited for the change in venue. And, of course, there's a great list of speakers that is being lined up as we speak, including folks like David Johnston, Jason King, Robert Murphy, Vitalik Buterin, Charlie Shrem, as well as others, including keynote speaker George Gilder. This is uh, a world-famous investor, economist, and author. Plus, IBM's architect of their blockchain technology will be there. Simbala Nair is flying in from India to speak at the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. Plus, they'll be hosting the second million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. If you want a glimpse into the future going even beyond Bitcoin, you'll want to be in Austin, Texas, March 28th and 29th. Go and reserve your tickets now at TexasBitcoinConference.com and use code FTL to get a $25 discount off the already very affordable $150 admission price. So once again, that's TexasBitcoinConference.com. Code FTL. When you use that code, another $25 of your admission fee will go to Benefit Sean's Outpost, which is a great uh, Bitcoin-based charity that's helping the homeless in Florida. TexasBitcoinConference.com. Free Talk Live, by the way, was there last year, and we will be there again this year broadcasting live. So if you're going to be there, we'll look forward to meeting you at TexasBitcoinConference.com, March 28th and 29th in Austin. Let's go to your uh, phone calls here, and then we'll continue, Johnson. You've got more from your Facebook conversation, (laughs) your Facebook flame war here in a moment. But first, Ryan is listening in Massachusetts and via the TuneIn app. Hello, Ryan. Hello. Hey, you're on the air. Hey, great. Um, okay, so to continue the Facebook uh, conversation uh, on the radio, uh, so Johnson brought up, uh, like, uh, one one idea was, like, billboard, okay, on the highway to pay for them. You know Talking about I mean? paying for uh, roads. Yes, paying for roads. So, uh, anyway, uh, I know that, like, so I'm from New England, and I in Vermont, okay, I, I believe last time I checked, the state law that they don't allow billboards <clears throat> on the side of the highway. Yeah, that would figure for somewhere like Vermont. I mean, Vermont <laughs> is kind of a kind of a hippie place, and they don't like so, businesses there. They don't like big business, and I presume that would carry over to not liking advertising as well. We don't like advertising controlling your mind, man. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, but it's also beautiful though too. Like if you ever drove up ninety five, you know eighty nine or whatever it is. Up mm-hmm. through, you know, so it's it's really beautiful. If you want to see real now, beauty, it, go to Vegas.com and you book yourself a trip today <laughs> where there are board, billboards as far as the eye can see. And really, it is gorgeous. Well, no, hold on. I mean, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Ryan, hold on a second. Beauty, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. And I think that what you're saying, though, is a good point and that a lot of people are going to be offended by the idea of like a scenic highway having been plastered with a bunch of billboards. Now, billboards don't offend me, but I can understand why some people don't like that, in which case yeah. there are other alternatives. I mean, what if instead of a bunch of billboards, what if one highway was adopted by one company and every so often you saw a relatively small like sign that said something like, this highway brought to you by Goodyear? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, but that leads me to. Uh, I will quick, say, I, I do. I, I just, just real yeah. quick, I do have to say that you know some people will take things to the extremes, you know, like with, with libertarians yeah. or whatever. I am squarely in the extreme on this one, where it comes down to billboards. Like, I don't care what's on the billboard. I am amused by the ones that are like, "Praise Jesus," and I'm an atheist, and I, I love those type oh. of billboards because they're interesting. I like those. I'm like, like. Abortion is murder. Like, you know, it whatever. Make the drive it doesn't more make the you know, like, you know, like 20 miles to Pedro's. It can be anything. But I, I also like the ones that are like neon live nude girls, you know, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Big billboard. I love billboards. It doesn't matter what they okay. are. So I'm squarely in the libertarian camp on this one. It can be anything. They can be every five feet wow. and they can be lit up with flashing neon LED, whatever. You know, I love billboards. You're supposed billboards. to be driving, though. You're supposed to be driving safely down the road. Yeah, you, you don't know, have to be yeah. staring well, at them. Well, hold on a second. I mean, you were just saying a moment ago that you don't like the billboards because they obstruct the view. Stop looking around if you don't. You know. <laughs> okay, uh, anyway, okay, can I make one more point? Because this is like a tough one. Like, what is the free market reason for preserving, like, the beautiful areas of, like, the, like the National Park? 
Because people like that right. stuff. Because so many people like Do that people stuff. like parks? Yes, people like parks. Does that mean that they would be willing to pay for them? I suspect they would. I know, but if there was gold or oil or gas there, wouldn't the free market, you know, they would just, they would, they would be able to, you know, purchase all the what land. What makes you think that the free market is some sort of mindless, you know, this group that <laughs> goes around and strip mines everything? I mean, there's people who are able to do, uh, you know, harvest trees sustainably in the free market. I because it's fantastic. Totally, I understand. I, I agree. But there's like, a fantastic well, I mean, owner if you're, article. If you're, if you're Halliburton, you see a mountain, you want to turn that mountain into money. You don't want to buy that mountain to just so exactly. You buy it no, first. no, no, wait, no, wait. Hold on. He's got a point, and his point is absolutely correct. But what you what you're not seeing is the fact that yes, Halliburton, unfortunately, as as a government contractor, normally doesn't own the land that they get, and that that's exactly it's a perfect example. And there's a great article by Mary Ruart about the environment from the book Healing Our World, where she specifically talks about the fact that what makes land have value is when it's sustainable you know like sustainable eco you know culture and whatnot in a, mm -hmm. in a thing so when you take out like when you for example you want to uh, mine a mountain you don't just strip mine it you you carefully mine it because then afterwards that mountain can then become a park or you can get lumber out of ski it or lodge. a ski yeah. lodge you keep the beauty of it when you own the property because you always want the property to have the most value and so the people that own things are the ones that take really good care of what they own and the people who uh, just rent the property from, from the, government, the government, essentially, or are given it, they're the ones who end up destroying, and not just destroying, but decimating the things that they get control of. Okay, fair enough. That, that was my question. Thanks, guys. Hey, thanks for the call, Ryan. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I will second the recommendation on uh, Johnson's part here that uh, Dr. Mary Ruart... It's still I think one of the best Liberty books out there, I think, it It's exists. called Healing Our World. You can actually get the 90s edition for free in various different formats. You can go to actually books.freekeen.com, and we have the audiobook version, and there's a PDF, and I think there's eBooks books uh, that are available. You can download that and read Did you read it. that one? Healing yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually made the audiobook for that book. And, oh, wait. No, it wasn't that book. It was the uh, Market for Liberty. Yeah, that I, I know read. you did Market for Liberty. <laughs> you don't even know. That's what I was asking. I knew you did Market no, for Liberty. I I'm sorry. I shouldn't take credit for work I didn't do. <laughs> Who did Healing Our World? I forget. I know that I, I, I actually did trade some words with the guy on Facebook at one point. Huh. Um, you know, some libertarian. He, okay. He did it. And uh, so it's available over at books.freekeen.com, and it's a great book. The thing that is really good about Healing Our World is that she comes at the issues from a compassionate perspective. And I think that one of the problems that beleaguers the liberty movement is that there's there's so many people who don't have the ability or they haven't practiced at communicating ideas of liberty while retaining compassion. Right. And so it can it can sound very harsh when you say like, ah, the hell with health care. You know, that's yeah. not what you're actually saying. You're saying, I don't like this government system. Uh, this government system is not optimal. And we would like to have a consensual a consent based system that would work a lot better at providing health care services for folks. It's not that we don't like the idea of helping the poor. Uh, you know, I, I can't speak for all libertarians, but it's not like most libertarians I know don't like the idea of helping the poor. Johnson, you're running Shire Sharing Keene, mm -hmm. which is an offshoot of Shire Sharing, which is a group that helps poor people here in New Hampshire. They focus around the Thanksgiving time of year, but it's it's a proof of concept that people can organize themselves without the assistance of the state to help people, and they can be more they can be better helped without the state because without the state you don't have the ridiculous overhead that comes with these government welfare programs where you're essentially paying 70% of the money that comes into the program to the bureaucrats who are administering the program. And then only 30% right. of it actually exactly. goes to uh, to actually supposedly help these people, many of whom are actually leeches who are taking advantage of a easily taken advantage right. of system. And so the real question is how much of that money actually goes to people who really need the help. Right. And they don't really know the answer to that in the welfare system because... You know, there's a lot of bureaucrats who just don't care. They're just there for the paycheck. Right. They're not there to really help yep, people. They just extract most of it. I mean, that, and that's what the government tends to do. And people don't see all the hidden value that's lost in this system of aggression. It costs a lot of money to pay to run this. thugs. Yeah, and there's, there's more on the way here. Johnson, you've got more pushers. from Facebook. Is that right? More yes. from Facebook? 855-450-FREE yep. is the toll-free number. You may call in to bring up anything you want. We're LRN.FM on Skype. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. 
This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, February 12th, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,225, up $3.00. Silver opened at $16.89, up $0.07, cents, and Bitcoin is trading around $221.31. Today's precious metal prices are brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This broadcast of the Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. With civil unrest occurring all across the country, being food secure has never been more important. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Bean or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, the Associated Press is reporting that President Barack Obama has asked Congress to formally authorize the use of military force against the Islamic State. President Obama offered a draft resolution stating the Islamic State poses a grave threat. Obama's three-page resolution calling for military force was obtained by the AP early Wednesday morning. The resolution would limit the war to three years with no limitations on where the U.S. military could chase the apparent terror threat. The language of the bill does not make it clear if ground troops are a possibility. However, it bans enduring offensive combat operations. Controversy continues in the September 11th trial as a former CIA linguist working as a translator for one of the alleged 9-11 planners, was revealed to have worked at a secret CIA prison. Defense lawyers for the accused have asked the judge to hold off on a planned pretrial hearing and to perform an investigation and background checks on staff. Defense attorney Cheryl Borman said the incident decimated any trust on the defense team. Judge Army Colonel James Pohl will question the prosecution about why the former CIA linguist was working for the defense team. The accused said they recognized the man from their years in secret prisons. The trial has been plagued with accusations of spying on the defense team and infiltration by the government. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by CoinArch, offering innovative trading solutions for Bitcoin. Do more than just buy and sell Bitcoin. Use long and short positions to profit in rising and falling markets and boost your returns through leverage. Learn more at CoinArch.com. Support also comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, February 12, 2015. 
check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A New York City police officer has been charged with second-degree manslaughter for killing an unarmed man last November. Officer Peter Lang's gun discharged a single bullet, which struck and killed 28-year-old Akash Gurley. Lang was charged with manslaughter, criminal negligent homicide, second-degree assault, second-degree reckless endangerment, and two counts of official misconduct. A California woman battling leukemia is suing the state attorney general for the right to have a physician-assisted suicide. The lawsuit is asking the San Francisco Superior Court to decide whether California law protects doctors from prosecution for assisting a dying, mentally competent patient. Christine White said she's suing the state to remove the legal barriers between her doctor and her ability to achieve a peaceful and dignified death. Researchers at a Texas museum have discovered the remains of a Demetrodon. The skeleton is believed to be around 290 million years old. The skeleton was discovered in Seymour, Texas, located about 135 miles northwest of Fort Worth. The discovery was made by Chris Fliss and his team at the Whiteside Museum of Natural History. Demetrodons are not dinosaurs, but rather paleosaurs, which are more closely related to mammals than reptiles. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Support also comes from the Free State Project. Want to find liberty in your lifetime? Then join thousands of others who are making the move to New Hampshire, the freest state in the union. To learn more or to pledge to move today, visit FreeStateProject.org. This is the Liberty Beat. For Thursday, February 12th, 2015, I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. The Onion looks back at this week in history. On May 6, 1937, the explosion of the German passenger ship Hindenburg brought cheer to an entire generation of Americans in the midst of the Great Depression. The souls of the American people were fleetingly revitalized by the flame engulfed Zeppelin and the shrill screams of burning passengers leaping to their heartwarming deaths. Oh my, it's burst into flames. The burning embers and charred flesh are cascading splendidly onto the mooring mast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most terrific thing I've ever seen. Oh, the luminosity, the gaiety. And on May 7th, 2000, Vladimir Putin became president of Russia after promising citizens he could bend anything they gave him with just his bare hands. And that was what happened this week in history. In the words of the Italian philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli, whoever wants to foresee the future must first look at the past and then imagine all that old stuff looking more futury and space-like. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We also have Skype. You may Skype in at username lrn.fm. It's a great way to, as we say, take control of the airwaves. You can bring up anything that you want. That is the point of Free Talk Live. Coming up, the surprising thing that people who resist authority have in common, according to Mike.com and their science section. We'll get into that when we get a chance. But for those of you just tuning in, in the last hour of the program, Johnson, you brought up a conversation that you'd had with somebody that you describe as a Facebook statist. Uh, somebody who uh, you and uh, this person were arguing about various different issues of a liberty-oriented perspective, at least your liberty-oriented perspective. Mm -hmm. The perspective of this individual seems to be that government's great, just we need to get it under control. There right, needs right. to be smaller government. But right. uh, what else would we do? Why we'd, we wouldn't have roads if it weren't for the government. Who would protect us if it weren't for the government? Yeah. And sort of running through the standard objections uh, to the ideas of liberty. And, of course, it's more valuable to talk about these things on the radio, which is why if sure, I ever find myself getting involved in these online conversations and I realize that I would rather spend my time on other things. Are you saying that I should have invited him to call in? Yeah, <laughs> you totally should have. You should, should have said, look, you know, hey, buddy. We've got 100,000 people that are going to listen to this radio show here tonight. If you sure. want more people to hear your viewpoints, then please call in. Let's talk sure. about these things where more than just this girl on the or the, whoever's Facebook page you were on and her friends would be the only ones to be able to sure, see this which are probably already mostly the choir. Yeah. 
So well, let's continue. Where were we in this discussion? What, were, what was the well, issue? Well, at least the hand? conversation gets to be kind of hashed out in a controlled environment and then brought brought for the listeners in a more uh, packaged way. You know, Well, we, we're, but, we're piecing it together here, or, or rather, I guess, dismantling it to some sure. extent. Uh, but he doesn't have the ability to respond. I mean, sure. Obviously, he's done that already. You guys yeah. went back and forth for how many sure. hours was this? Oh, pff, not that long. Oh, at all. Okay. This was you know, <laughs> rapid fire. I mean, at, at some point, you know, I stopped replying and would go back hours later and then, yeah. you know, drop a reply. But. Yeah, I mean, I type very quickly anyway, so, you know, it's one of those things where it's like I'll even sometimes when I'm having these conversations use speech recognition, so. That's handy. Yeah, I just type fast. But so he asked, uh, you really want to have to pay a toll out of your driveway to the corner store? How (laughs) practical is that? So, of course, you know, I had to latch on and reply to that. Um, I said, you know, apparently also you've never heard of voluntary homeowners associations or collective property ownership that includes voluntary contracts that people sign into of their own free will. There is a difference between choosing the rules that you want to follow and having them violently forced upon you that you seem to be missing. Most peaceful people choose to follow rules like don't murder your neighbor voluntarily because they are good people and not because they simply are afraid that some government agent is going to come and lock them up. In a moral world, the only time force should be necessary is to prevent others from using force on peaceful people. Justice should focus on aggression. And uh, Status is you know still going back, and I think he was responding to an earlier comment, but uh, said, "Yeah, pay for warriors." You know when I had said, you know, people yeah, you would, well, he had asked who would pay for the uh, the right. military, and you said, "Well, the people who want war should pay for the warriors." Right. And so he said, you are a funny guy. I'm sure that the, you feel the military is of no use to you since there is nobody at your doorstep with an RPG right now. <laughs> Obviously. Like the military is going to somehow save you if right. that were the case. I mean, there's nothing stopping someone from showing up with an RPG at your doorstep. Right, right. Obviously. The military is over in Iraq, by the way. If somebody were to show up with an RPG at your doorstep, uh, first of all, it'd be too late for even the police right. to respond. But the military are even further away. Right. Obviously, you have issues living in a society. Um, I yes. think an isolated you island. <laughs> that's just every argument. I think, uh, uh, or obviously, uh, or no, sorry. I think an isolated island, maybe in the Pacific, would do you good uh, all yes. by yourself. You sound like a liberal with ideas but no details. <laughs> if only you paid for the electricity you used. Who would pay for all the infrastructure to implement it? Your electricity would be unaffordable. Were you abused as a child? Um, just so this guy, I mean, yeah. he's probably not listening to the show, but in case anybody else listening is uh, in agreement with this person, um, the infrastructure for electricity was provided by the electric company. Right. The, poles, get into that. the poles are not usually owned by the state, from what I understand. <laughs> uh, he's like... Where are you getting all this violence you speak of? Ah, I, yes. I nor any of my family nor friends have ever had anything done to them violently by right. the government. You obviously don't know the people with- Because you pay up like a sucker. Oh, my God. You obviously don't know people with ghetto mentality. They don't choose to follow the rules like don't murder your neighbor. And in fact, they live by that very action. Without a police force, they'd be killing everyone they saw and taking Ridiculous. everything they could see. Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, anyone? You guys go. Could, uh, yeah, Hurricane Katrina yeah. was where the government went around and disarmed people, and so where they cops couldn't defend were stealing themselves. from Walmart on video on YouTube. That happened. Yep. Uh, you guys go live on an island somewhere where everything is all peachy and everyone voluntarily pays and what they what needs to get paid for the good of the community and see how that goes for you. Then uh, you don't have to complain about the government anymore because you will be it. You don't want to fix the government here. You want to eliminate it altogether. I want no part of the complete chaos and total lack of national defense, which is exactly is what that would be. I'm just curious. Uh, no thanks. You guys go fend for yourselves. No, I believe uh, he's in Minnesota. Okay. So, Good. Stay there, buddy. Yeah, yeah, stay there. Um, uh, okay, so there was more stuff. You know, like uh, the guy's like, oh, so now it comes out. There were some other replies. Now it comes out. Anyone who thinks a government is necessary is a neocon. What did you call him, a neocon? Or no, something? I didn't. Apparently, oh. this other guy did. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think, you know, I don't want to read the whole thing because sure, you know, that would be a little long. 
Um, you know, he said, uh, uh, so you are an anti-government radical who thinks that things, if they just go back and reinterpret the foundings of our laws, that they can denounce all that currently exists, despite all that has been ruled upon for the last 230 years and a half, or 230 years and a half of the current laws. Have you denounced your citizenship yet? Have you refused <laughs> to pay taxes yet? How can I denounce something that doesn't even exist in the first place? Uh, citizenship is the idea that you owe a duty of allegiance in return for an obligation of protection and they have no obligation to protect so why should i have my uh, give them my allegiance exactly i jump at you know i'm gonna jump forward to where i replied to him and he I, you know his point where he said your electricity would be unaffordable i said it's funny how status thinks that taxes are magic money that come from thin air and that people aren't paying for the infrastructure already mm. Sorry, statist, but taxes... The government is magic. Yeah, I'm what? like, sorry, statist, but taxes are not magic. Whether things get paid for by violence or by peaceful persuasion and service fees is a moral difference and little else. The reality is that violence is expensive. That is the unnecessary infrastructure. It costs money mm. to pay thugs to get things done. It costs lots and lots of money to do all the paperwork the government creates. If I had to pay thugs to threaten every customer I have to get business, it would be extremely <laughs> costly. It's much more effective business to offer better products and services that attract customers to pay for the building and fixtures yeah. and advertising than it is to the pay for has, thugs. Government doesn't have to do that, though, because yeah. they have the thugs, so they don't have to offer anything more attractive. They don't have to increase right. their quality of service. But I, th I said I, being violent is never a long -term, good long-term business strategy, and I think that holds true for government, for too. Sure. Uh, governments collapse. They all collapse yeah, eventually. This one on, it's living way too long, this yeah. one. They've managed to keep the uh, the scam going. I go on, I say, also, the only reason no one has done violence to you in the government is because you are obedient to the point of being an advocate. You don't question the system. You parrot it and pledge allegiance to it. You love the thugs. Yeah. For sure. Status, how do you respond to the fact that as an American, you are eight times more likely to die by police attack than by terrorist attack? And this has nothing to do with criminality or attitude either. Let me Innocent guess, he ignores people, that point. Yeah. Innocent people get killed by police all the time now. Even dumb th uh, thugs, or sorry, even dumb things such as stray gunfire or police raiding the wrong house. And that is the last comment. So he doesn't thread. respond to he it. He hasn't <laughs> responded since. How long has it been since you posted that? Uh, eight hours. Okay, so he's had more than an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. If this was a back and forth that went yeah, went on over yeah, it was a, back and forth. a period of a day or something like that. Yeah. Well, thanks, Johnson, for sharing that uh, that piece. I, I thought it, it was interesting. You know, I thought a lot was, of people deal with this conversation, right? Exactly, and I just think that you know, occasionally from time to time, it's good to go back to the roots because these are the type of arguments that, if you are a libertarian or a liberty-minded person, you are hearing these things over and over and over again. And if you're an the objections, oh, you mean you hear them tenfold. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, the objections and these type of just crazy. I mean, it's it's just. Statism is a religion. Well, and it's all, it's somewhere where a lot of us used to be. So right. uh, it's frustrating. And we'll come back with more here in moments. He's also this character that you didn't name, is also the kind of person who would likely shock another individual if he was told to do so by a man in a lab coat. We'll talk about authority here in moments. <laughs> this is Free Talk Live, 855 450 free. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. 
According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mints, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2233. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the morning roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the morning roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll free to bring up anything you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Science. Uh, the science section of Mike.com, M-I-C, Mike.com, has a story here by Christnell Store called The Surprising Thing People Who Resist Authority Have in Common. We'll share that with you here in a moment. And also something else that a lot of our listeners now have in common is they're enjoying delicious BuzzBox coffee. And what better uh, gift to give a family member or a loved one this Valentine's Day than coffee. In fact, all you have to do is call up BuzzBox over at 866-336-6104 or go to coffee.freetalklive.com and select Give BuzzBox at the top of the page. You can choose any roast or style of BuzzBox coffee, whole bean, or a specific grind, and you can make your gift one, three, six, nine, or 12-month uh, shipments. We all love coffee, so why not give your co favorite coffee lover a Valentine's Day gift that you know they'll enjoy? Light roast, medium roast, dark roast, espresso, decaf, signature blends, roasters limited reserve, BuzzBox Coffee offers it all. And for the K-Cup gifts, be sure to have them include the reusable solo fill. When you give BuzzBox Coffee as a gift, you'll know you're giving what's truly the best of the best coffee. That's USDA certified organic, shade grown, top 1% Arabica grade, fairly traded, and helps support many of the good causes of Kiva.org. That's right. When you order coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we're giving out micro loans with some of the profits. So giving gifts has never been so easy. So have an impact and make a difference one cup at a time by giving BuzzBox Coffee for Valentine's Day now. It's not too late. Call them at 866-336-6104 or just go to coffee.freetalklive.com and select Give BuzzBox. 
Here's the story from Mike.com. You're welcome to share your thoughts. In 1961, Yale psychologist Stanley Milgram conducted a series of experiments looking at people's willingness to obey authority. And over the years on Free Talk Live, we have discussed the infamous Milgram experiments many, many times. But it may be your first time hearing about it. So the article does go into a little bit of detail. Now, a new, um, excuse me. So basically the study looks at people's willingness to obey authority, even when doing so means harming another human being. A new analysis of the controversial experiment suggests that the difference between blind obedience and disobedience may be less a question of morality and more a question of skill set. That is, how many tactics a person can try to assert him or herself in the face of authority. Matthew Hollander, a sociologist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, recently looked at the experiments, the Milgram experiments, in which 800 Americans were told to read a series of questions to a person they could not see in another room. The unse- if the unseen person answered the questions incorrectly, the participants were instructed to electrocute them by flipping a switch. With each wrong answer, the voltage increased. Now, No one was actually being electrocuted, despite being unaware that the unseen people were in fact actors and in no real danger of harm. 65% of the participants continued to deliver potentially life-ending jolts of electricity simply because they were told to do so, usually by a man in a lab coat carrying a clipboard, even while hearing screams and pleas to stop. So basically they had an actor in the other room connected via some sort of a uh, headset or some kind of a speaker to where you could could hear what the actor was uh, was doing, and when they would issue these supposed shocks, the actor would act as though they were being shocked. So it sounded real. The person in right. the it, the person issuing the shocks fully believed that they were hurting this person, and they kept going all the way to the maximum. Sixty five percent of the test subjects went to the maximum deadly level voltage uh, just because they were told to do so in this experiment. These are class. This is a classic obedience to authority experiment. You know, I would like to um, see uh, on one of these experiments, and and it's really kind of scary. Actually, this thought that kind of occurred to me that I haven't seen an experiment done this way. But all of these, you know, like the Milgram experiment and the Stanford Prison experiment. I mean, a lot of them are done in with this sort of like lab kind of environment, right? And it's mm-hmm. it's about you know someone in a lab coat that that's the authority, right? Uh, telling someone to do something bad. You know, and, it, and it's always something bad, like shocking another person. It's like an obvious, you're causing pain to someone else, right? Like that's the obvious, you're you're causing pain and, and you know, literally hurting someone, right? Yep. I'd like to see an experiment with this type of thing about when it's a boss telling you to do something bad to a coworker. Because hmm. it changes the whole dynamic, doesn't it? When it's, you're, you're. Do not only are you following orders and there's the authority you're getting there, a paycheck. but you're getting a paycheck. And if you don't do it, you might be afraid you'd lose your job. Mm. So there's yeah. It's, I wonder it's if the percentage. And stick. I wonder if the percentage would be higher, right? So you get sixty five percent in the Milgram experiment where it's just someone in a study, right? Um, but yeah, what would be the difference? But then also these tactics that you're about to talk about, I think, is about how to resist, right? Is there there's some things about how to resist this type of the common uh, thread between those who uh, resist, right? Okay, the common thread between those those who resist. I would like to, as we talk about this, let's also apply to or see if this can be applied to the workplace. Could the the common tactics for resistance in these experiments can they also be applied in the workplace without losing your job? Keep that in mind here yep. as we continue. Sounds cold, but according to Hollander's new analysis published this month in the British Journal of Social Psychology, it may have little to do with conscience. People who challenge authority may simply have more ways of expressing themselves in order to get out of things they don't want to do. Both the people who followed the instructions and the few who refused to carry them out showed resistance. But those who successfully disobeyed, labeled heroes by Milgram, had, quote, a set of skills for resisting authority figures, unquote. This according to Hollander, who is the person studying the Milgram studies. How to, rebel, uh, how to Rebel. In his analysis, Hollander lists the six most common resistance tactics, or stop tries, that hero participants displayed. Silence or hesitation. Groaning or sighing. Laughing nervously. Challenging the authority figure. Addressing the person being electrocuted. And finally, refusing to carry on. 
Participants who followed instructions also exhibited some of these behaviors, but their resistance never escalated to the point of refusal. The obedient person used stop tries, but only in one form before complying, while the heroes used an assortment of the six stop tries when pressed to execute the instructions. Quote, what's made the most impression on me is in order to be a hero in the Milgram situation, they didn't have to differ from the obedient in any particular way. They didn't need to be richer or poorer or man versus woman. Why this matters? According to Hollander, Milgram-esque situations occur in everyday life. He thinks teaching a disobedient skill set should be the next step. Which is an interesting idea, right? Because the government sure as hell isn't going to teach anyone how to, to be disobedient right. and the value of that. So I think that these stop tries, once the, you know the list of stop tries, I'm just I'm still thinking about this in terms of a business thing, and I'm going to put this out there. If there are any millionaires listening to this show, I think you need to give me a research grant because <laughs> if you can figure this out, right? If you can figure this out, right? What the stop tries are, what these stop tries are to resisting authority, to not be negatively treating other human beings in a workplace, right? And you can figure out how these stop tries work, right, and how to create a work culture around not um, debasing or devaluing someone who does these types of things, like groans against, you mm -hmm. know, when it's when it's in regards to treating another person badly. Boy, you could create a work culture that just would be pretty outstanding for your business, couldn't you? Like a corporate work culture that... Uh, Valued people and valued, you know, valued uh, not harming other other people in a, in a very good way. Chris Nell says here in the article, so the next time you're feeling rebellious, remember there are many ways to disobey authority. So try, try and try again. It's no secret that government and big business buy in bulk and get huge discounts not available to the little guy until now. Introducing a breakthrough crowd buying website where people can join together, buy in bulk and get massive discounts on millions of popular products. It's togethersave.com. Togethersave.com. You can save 20, 30, or even 50% off tablets, smartphones, cars, appliances, textbooks, sports equipment, video games, and much more. All with free delivery. Check it out. Togethersave.com. Visit now and start group buying today at togethersave.com. This is Tim Austin, Senior Vice President of Kmart. Our company is working together with the March of Dimes through March for Babies to raise money and awareness about the serious problem of premature birth in the U.S. As a business leader, I know that babies born very sick or too soon cost businesses billions of dollars each year. That's why Kmart is committed to raising funds through our employees, customers, family, and friends to improve the health of moms and babies everywhere. Won't you please join us in March for Babies? Start a team today at marchforbabies.org. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a free, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime, 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free to bring up what you would like at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features waiting for you. We've got them there, and they're totally free. You can help support Free Talk Live by shopping with us at shop.freetalklive.com. And that's where you can enter Amazon through the links there. There's Amazon US, UK, and Canada. You just go into the right Amazon for you, and Free Talk Live will uh, get a cut of the sale. It's that simple. You get the stuff you're looking for at great prices, free super saver shipping, Amazon Prime, all of that. Free Talk Live just gets a cut of the sale when you enter through shop.freetalklive.com. But some things you can't get on Amazon, including Sherry's Berries. That you can only get at berries.com. But we've got a special offer for you that is going to, uh, you know, the Valentine's Day weekend is coming up, so you're running out of time in which to take advantage of this offer. But go to berries.com and click on the microphone in the top right to type in code FTL, like Free Talk Live, and get a unique and thoughtful gift this Valentine's Day, something that uh, your, loved, your loved one may not be expecting, which is delicious chocolate-covered strawberries. Some of the best strawberries you will ever put in your mouth. Plus, they're dipped in white milk and dark chocolatey goodness and topped with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, or nuts. Plus, you get them starting at just $19.99 with code FTL. It's a 40% savings over at berries.com. Just click the microphone, type in code FTL to get the deals. And double the berries for just $10 more, which is really an incredible deal. I highly recommend you double the berries. You will not be disappointed in the quality of this product. It, it, they are delicious. And whether you're getting them for a loved one or just getting an order for yourself, you're going to want to double those berries. So go to berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. Click the mic, use code FTL to get the deals. And Sherry's Berries, perfect gift for this Valentine's Day. But your time is running out to get them in time for Valentine's Day. So do it tonight at berries.com with code FTL. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. We've got James. He's in Pasco, Washington. Uh, James, you're on Free Talk Live. Yes, sir. Hey, welcome. Uh, yeah, I was calling in uh, regards to that officer-involved shooting uh, that happened this week in Pasco, Washington. This was um, the shooting of a man who was throwing rocks, correct? Y yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I uh, was listening to your show last night. A gentleman called in from Pasco, too. Yeah. Um. The size of the rocks that were in question are really, honestly, very small. Um, the video, I don't know if you guys have, or the public, how many people have seen this video. I watched but. the video, and I actually thought the rock was fairly large. The footage that I saw was taken from a distance. There was somebody who was <laughs> recording from their car, and had it been a small rock, it would have been difficult to see the rock on this video footage at the distance that this cameraman was sitting at. But this rock that the guy chucks at the police looked to be like a small boulder. I mean, it looked like it was wow. at least the size of his hand. This was not a small rock, in my opinion. Well, one of the officers that was involved in it, he was, uh, I'm not sure the name of the gentleman, but he was in a, he's a two-year veteran of the force. He, in, about two years ago, he was, uh, he ended up getting involved with a $100,000 lawsuit here uh, with, they beat a lady, a mm. Hispanic lady up. Oh, no. 
and he was involved with that. Um, and basically, you know, we've had four shootings in this area uh, within this year, and we're a small, small, small town. Yeah, how big is Pasco, and, Washington? Uh, well, you can get through in about 20 minutes, all three cities. 67,000, according to Google, is the population there. So I wouldn't call it a small, small, small town, but it's definitely, you know, small city. Yeah, I came from Tennessee, so. So tell me more. Um, I mean, so what what else did you want to observe? You're, sh- you're sharing with us that the ooh. officer, at least one of the officers involved, had been involved in a, a another previous violent incident. Yes, uh, and he was found. They, they, uh basically paid the lady out a hundred thousand dollars for it so obviously mm. they found some guilt there but the coroner has decided to do an inquest on it because uh there's a lot of suspicions right. yeah it sounds like it but like if you I, watch the video when this guy chucks the rock at the cops the way this rock bounces you can tell it's got a lot of momentum with wow. it like if this were a small rock it would have hit the ground and just kind of skidded but instead it bounces yeah. like a bowling ball would <laughs> if you chucked a bowling ball uh, I mean, I'm not saying it's as large as a bowling ball, but I bet you it was half the size of a bowling right. ball. A shot no, no, I like to say, I know this area, there we, we don't have any lack of rocks around here. They're all size, but I mean, I know the area as far as that goes. And I mean, something's got to happen as far as this goes because it's, you know. What do you think's going to happen? What happens? Oh, I hope something happens as far as that goes. I mean,. Uh, yeah, Nothing's going to happen. The police are going to get yeah, a stern know, talking know, to. They're, they're, somebody's going to send a memo out to the police and, uh, you know, maybe give them a stern finger wagging. Uh, none of these officers are going to get in any trouble because there is an argument here that the officers were in the right. And I'm not saying they were. I think they could have been a little more judicious in their use of force. I think they could have backed off. They didn't have to rush the guy like they did. And. I think they handled it in, incorrectly, but the police are going to say this was totally legit, and they're not going to be oh, yeah. facing there's, any kind of punishment. There's there's rumors flying around, and it's all rumors, uh, but there, there's a chance the guy may have been dead. Oh, my gosh. You think? Uh, what's flying around? That's, what that's I've still hearing. no excuse, though. I mean, look, if the guy was deaf— he still is, unless he's crazy, which he may have been, uh, unless uh, he's absolutely bat s insane, he's going to realize that three cops pointing tasers at him, even <laughs> if he can't hear what they're screaming, uh, probably is something he should just go ahead and stop doing what he's doing. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, if the world was perfect, too, then we wouldn't need the police. But basically, I mean, we've had four officer involved shootings this year. Um, and. It's getting to the point, though, that people in this area are fearing the police. And that's a shame because that's what the that's that's what's happening all around the country, and that's why the police are no longer uh, popular. They're no longer seen as as uh, people's friends, officer friendly, um, and it's it, it it shouldn't be that way. I want to be in a place where the police are friendly, where they are peace officers instead of law enforcement officers. And James, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Uh, that's what I'd like to see. I, I'd like, and, and actually, there was I was at the state house today that we were doing, uh, you know, testifying on various different bills. One of the bills I didn't get a chance to uh, poke my head into because I was elsewhere was a bill that would change all of the references to law enforcement officer to peace officer in the New Hampshire statutes, which of course won't do a damn thing to right. reduce police violence. But I do like the idea of a peace officer I as opposed like, to a law enforcement. officer. I feel like channeling the Wednesday night goes for a bit. And just say, like, well, you know, a bill went through uh, the House today that got through the House that's going to make sure that these officers are peaceful, and that's the constitutional carry bill. That didn't go through the House today. I thought it did. It got passed. I saw a post about it. It said it got passed. That now it's, uh, you don't have to have a permit anymore in the state of New Hampshire today. Oh, no, that can't be true. I want you to no, no, that you no. don't have to. I'm sorry, not not that you don't have to have a permit, but that you can can you can no, conceal carry. No, I don't believe carry. you. I don't believe you. You're gonna have to prove that one to me because okay. they just just last week had a Senate hearing about that bill. You're talking about the bill that would essentially make New Hampshire the equivalent of Vermont as far as its gun laws, which would be awesome if it actually passes. Yeah, and that's exactly how it was framed when I was. There was a it. Senate hearing on that, which was very well attended by liberty activists, and there were over a hundred people who attended that hearing, which is a, a very good turnout. Um, but that was the Senate version of the bill. Once the, if the Senate passed it, then it would go on to the House, 
where then if the House passes it, it would then go to the governor. So as far as I know, it was in the Senate, and that was its first place. It was originally a Senate bill, and it will likely not get passed over to the House until March. Senate passes constitutional carry bill eight hours ago. Yeah. Well, that's great news. What was the vote? Do you happen um, to have that handy? Uh, well, I'll look at Just the article. Just because the Senate... Johnson, this is basic civics here for you. <laughs> Just because the Senate passes a bill doesn't mean that it's actually been passed into law. It still has yeah, to have the approval I, of sorry, the Yeah, sorry, I got overzealous when I read the article and I just yeah. thought it was passed. I probably didn't uh, read carefully enough. The question is, I don't think it's going to have a problem. First of all, I don't think it's going to have a problem at all getting through the, the state house. Uh, the legislature is very gun-friendly. That's not going to be an issue. The real question is going to be Maggie Hassan, who is the governor. 14 to 9. 14 to 9. Is that a veto-proof margin? I wonder about that. Uh, we'll come back here in moments because, you know, the question is if the governor vetoes this, right. then there's a certain margin of votes that could override that. More coming up. So it's not a done deal yet, but hopefully it will be soon enough. We'll, uh, we'll let you know when that happens. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. Majid lives in Nord Devin, Armenia with his wife, kids, and grandkids all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel it any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. If you're looking for work, there's a piece of paper more important than your resume. It's the cover letter attached if you're snail mailing or the email to which you attach your resume. Make it four short paragraphs. Paragraph one, say that you're applying for work. The person you're sending to gets a ton of mail about all sorts of things. If you have a password, that's your first sentence. Tom Nelson tells me you and I should meet. Paragraph 2, what you do and how that relates to the opening. Be as specific as possible. Paragraph 3, why you want this particular job. I'm originally from Boston, so I know the market well. I have family and friends in the area, so this would be a homecoming for me. Paragraph 4, unless the job posting stipulates no calls, and I will call you to follow up. Thank you in advance for your time. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here to bring up what you want. Even these remaining moments, we've got enough time for you. If you dial in now at 855-450-FREE or Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. With you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Johnson. And we're going right back into your calls and thoughts. We've got, first up, Cyrus is with us in Richmond, Virginia via Skype. Hello, Cyrus. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking hey. my call. Go ahead. I'm calling uh, in about the uh, recent video. I'm not sure if you had a chance to see it or not. It's the uh, alleged uh, drunken school bus driver with the uh, children uh, panicking and freaking out on the school bus. I have the video uh, in front of me, but I hadn't heard of it until you called in. Okay, basically, the one of the things that um, I found very disturbing about it was that the children of all different ages, um, you can see probably preteens, and then there were little kids with lunch boxes. Um, and they were hugging each other and crying and screaming. And the the I guess the point I'm trying to get at is that they were begging and screaming, hoping that this woman would stop the bus, just stop mm -hmm. the bus. They begged and begged and begged to get off. And um, what what I mentioned to my my wife was the fact that um, at some point, like society doesn't allow kids to just say no to an adult and you know it's this blind respect that kids are taught from a very young age that you have to respect all adults and here is a situation where quite literally their life was um, you know at risk and at to, even to the point where one of the students uh, was actually telling the children to get back on the bus which was very reminiscent of 9-11 and <laughs> you know if you will maybe not to that extreme but just the whole herd mentality oh we belong on the bus we should be on the bus Let's get back on the bus. And uh, it was awful. And I was just curious, you know, this whole uh, idea of listening to your uh, adults, you know, as little kids, it, it's scary because, you know, there are some pretty stupid adults out there. And I was I was just curious on your guys' opinion on it. So wait a minute. So what you're saying is you thought these kids were just going along with this person who was drunk? The article I'm reading here says they they actually were the ones responsible for stopping this maniac. No, no, no. If you actually watch the video, there were a lot of uh, it was about half and half. Um, there were a few kids, the older kids were saying, uh, stop the bus, stop the bus, stop mm -hmm. the bus. You know, they're saying I have to go to the bathroom, so on and so forth. Yep. Um, but you'll also notice that there were a bunch of kids that were actually just sitting on the bus. Not, not. I'm not calling the little kids out um, that they don't know what to do, although that's a concern in and of itself. But the fact that these, uh, I'd say preteens, I can't know their ages definitively, but let's say they were like maybe 12 years old ish and uh, they were getting back on the bus. Um, and not all of them, you know, some of them were smart enough to get off and they opened up the back door and I'm not sure if there was a safety mechanism actually on the bus that uh, makes it from not going backwards because the bus was in fact rolling backwards. Hmm. But I think that like I'm getting as the bigger picture that this was a clear example that, you know, where do you, do you teach your kids to say, hey, listen, you know what? As an adult, you aren't having the correct answers here, and, and now our lives are at risk. And I've always, you know, taught my kids to, you know, be, you know, I guess, you know, be courteous, have a certain level of common courtesy, but the actual level of respect um, that they force, you know, at the government schools, as you like to refer to them as, um, you know, they, they force it and force it and force it until it could have been these kids detriment you know if things got worse yeah well, i definitely share the concern that uh and yeah we were talking about obedience to authority earlier 
Um, I definitely share the concern uh, that you have here, and that is that the, these government schools are indoctrinating young people into blindly following authority. Uh, on the other hand, I remember what it was like to be on a school bus, and I know that the people on the, that school bus, at least in my time, and maybe things are worse now than they were back then with this indoctrination, but when I was on the government school bus, nobody really much cared for most of the bus drivers, and uh, we would do things to make their life a living hell. So uh, I guess it just depends... <laughs> I guess it just depends. I mean, on, on any bus, you're gonna. I think you're going to have a mix, and that's why what you were saying was some of these kids get off the bus while others got back on the bus. Um, there's always going to be, in any group of 100 kids, there's going to be some of them who, you know, they, they're not buying into this whole authority thing. And unfortunately, it's probably, you know, not the majority of them that don't buy into the authority thing. Like, you know, I noticed that when I was watching this, the person who comes up from uh, to try to put a stop to this. Now, I wasn't listening to the audio, and apparently they are actually recording audio of the students on this bus. Correct. Um, but I was just watching the video, and the first person to sort of come forward is coming from the back of the bus. So mm -hmm. that shows me that, you know, likely the, the people that sit at the back of the bus, at least in my day, were the ones who were less likely to be the obedient ones. The ones sitting up front were the ones who were most likely the kind of the teacher's pet uh, types, and I imagine that hasn't changed too much. So I wasn't surprised to see that the first person to try to put a stop to it was uh, coming up from the from the back. Yeah, it was it was scary. You guys definitely should check it out. By the way, you said this is an you. alleged drunk, uh, not well, anymore. I mean, I She's oh, okay. she tested with a 0.15 blood alcohol Ooh. content. That's uh, almost twice the legal limit. And she pled guilty uh, to driving while intoxicated, as well as 37 counts of reckless endangerment. One for each student on the bus. This from SF Globe. Dot com. Children revealed that Thompson, this is the driver, Martha Thompson, reached speeds of up to 70 miles per hour and hit a mailbox. Wow. In watching the video, you can sense the unrest on the bus immediately, and it's not long before the children make their stand. Uh, she is apparently sentenced to, I believe it was uh, 90 days in jail. I know I had it. 90 days. That's it. 90 days. Wow. What a world. Yeah, so thanks for bringing that to uh, to my attention. Yeah, 90 days of jail, six months of electronic home monitoring, <laughs> and five Mean years of probation. Meanwhile, our, our friend a friend of ours here in Keene just got a sentence of a suspended sentence of a year and a half yeah. because he crossed a police line that they moved arbitrarily without telling anyone. Cyrus, thanks oh. for the call. Go ahead. Thank Any you. other thoughts? No, no, I was just going to say I, I'm, I'm proud of everything you guys do, and I thank you so much for everything. Oh, thanks for being here. You sound great, by the way, on Skype. Appreciate the call there. Total free number is 855-450. 50 free. If you want to be, uh, get on Skype like Cyrus, you can do that by calling lrn.fm. You do have to add us as a contact first. Let's go to Tom. He's in Baltimore. Tom, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Johnson. You know, guys, I never had fun bus rides like that. <laughs> um, unfortunate. My driver was so slow. She used to drive us crazy. I think we would have looked forward to something like you know, that. You can get those school school buses at like government auctions, like the used one, old oh, ones. Oh, Lord. Pretty cheap. So if you really wanted to do that, you know, you could. Satisfy that, that old that drive and need to live that fantasy. Yeah. Buy a school bus uh, and enter it into a demolition derby. And how great would that be? That's all they're good for. <laughs> Or I, I could just pose as a bus driver and start picking up kids. Oh, oh my God! God. It's a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> that's that's a very I terrible idea. Probably shouldn't give anybody any ideas no, about no, that. Anyway, that. I wanted to let you know about your idea. You're, you're pretty one? bright relative to uh, taking the Milgram experiment further. I know that they've done that. Um, I was a psych major at one time. Um, I never did follow through with that, but I do remember, and this was back in the 80s, so it would have been pre, and it was already in the textbook, so probably right. in the early 80s or late 70s, they would have done an experiment um, based on the Milgram uh, uh, findings, and it was done in a prison, or a, a mock prison. The they Stanford had, Prison, prison Experiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I used to remember the guy's name by just switching the Z and the L. Zimbardo. Yeah, Philip yep. Zimbardo. His name was. Yep. Um, so you're familiar with that. Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact, Zimbardo. It unfortunately bore out everything that you'd expect relative yeah. to human behavior. It quickly became literally and figuratively animal form. Well, the um, Zimbardo experiment was fascinating for so many different reasons, but one of them was that it basically essentially re revealed that humans, when put into a certain role, 
when dressed or, uh, you know, in a specific role, like as guard or prisoner, they acted the part. They yeah. fell into line and uh, started behaving as though they were actually prisoners and actually guards. And the guards were, you know, wielding power over the prisoners. And and even Zimbardo had to uh, end the experiment early because it got out of control. Well, you know, it ties in with the kids on the bus. In psychology, we would be looking for whether or not the subjects are uh, uh, showing situational attributions or dispositional um, attributions. In this case, they would be showing situational attributions, which, like you said, would support that not their personality and upbringing necessarily, but more often than not, simply the situation that they're put in the clothes they're dressed in mm -hmm. determine, and this is scary, how they're going to behave. Right. Oh, wow. Even that clothes? Yeah. On your, your upbringing, your, your religious beliefs. I mean, not with everybody, of course, but like in this experiment, I remember it wasn't half, but it was an alarm. Remember, they, well, hold on. Pain. Remember, the, the, the guards and the prisoners were randomly assigned in this experiment. So it's not like the people right. who, it's not like the people who were guards wanted to be guards. They weren't people who were seeking those roles of power. They were assigned to those roles and they fell right, right into line. You know what's fascinating, right. Tom? I thank you for the call tonight. We're out of time. But uh, for people that want to learn more about the Stanford prison experiment, yeah. Zimbardo actually put up an but, excellent ex website. Uh, that really goes into what happened there, and it's got, you know, documents and photos. It's really well done. Uh, it's still up. The site is PrisonExp, yep. PrisonExp.org, prison, as in prison experiment, PrisonExp.org. Go there to learn more about it. It's fascinating reading. We'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Here's Free Talk Live. We're talking about the immigration situation here in this country. Now, Jeff, you have a five-point plan. I'd like for you to go over the five points again. Oh, sure. Hold on. I just, I just got turned to the page. That's fine. And there if you, uh, he's got pages worth of <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Number one, close the border. Put up, put, put up a barrier on the border. And, and I mean a, a barrier. Like a great wall? Um, yeah, a great wall, barrier, stone wall. Right. I mean, something that's secure. And, and then you put a moat underneath. Moat? Holy crap. Yeah, Alligators yeah. in the moat? <laughs> All right. Now, yeah. you've got more, though, right? we got a wall oh, and a oh, moat. Oh. And then what? Uh, and you can you can put sensors on there. The, the right. Motion detector. Motion, uh, like motion tracking uh, machine guns, too. Um, like, yeah. Spit out some 50 cows right. at them if, they, if it moves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ninjas. That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> we just need ninjas mounted at 10-foot intervals along this wall. The border ninjas. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Flaming Freedom is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, February 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.63 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,221 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $220.
Antiwar.com reports with the ongoing ceasefire negotiations in Minsk facing an uncertain outcome, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko is threatening to introduce martial law in all territories of Ukraine if the talks fail. The comments are in the context of a war that is going increasingly poorly for the government, which launched an offensive against the rebels last month and is quickly losing even more ground to them. While Poroshenko warns the situation could quickly spiral out of control, control, it's not clear what he hopes to gain by threatening to give the military effective executive control over the entire nation. After all, the rebels have control over their own territory in Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast, and transitioning alleged control from civilian officials who are using the military and unable to conquer them, or just turning it over to the same military that isn't winning the war now. The only places the military could practically take over are of the western three-quarters of the country, 